You're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome to Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina. 80,000 plus gather for an ACC SEC matchup. Debo Sweeney's Clemson Tigers looking to end the nation's longest win streak, owned by Gene Chiswick and Auburn. Clemson is led by sophomore quarterback Taj Boyd. On the other side, a new QB for the defending champs. Barrett Trotter replaces Cam Newton. Auburn 2-0, but a rough start. Come from behind wins against Utah State thanks to an onside kick in week one. And then in week two against Mississippi State, a goal line stand led by Ryan Smith stopping Chris Ralph to give Auburn a 41-34 win. Welcome to the ACC on ESPN. It's ESPN College Football presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Auburn has won 17 straight, including a BCS championship, beat Clemson in overtime last year to springboard them to a title. Hi, everyone, alongside Urban Meyer and Chris Spielman. I'm Dave Pash. Well, last year, guys, Auburn arguably the best offensive team in college football. But in watching film with a coach and a coach's son, it's pretty easy to tell that Auburn is much different this year without Cam Newton. Well, the difference is obviously the quarterback. Last year, the entire run game was predicated by the quarterback making the read. This is Q Power Bash. The quarterback's going to read the defensive end on the left-hand side. If he comes up field, he's going to pull the ball. The offense line is actually blocking for the quarterback Q power bash and there Cam Newton pulls it he makes a correct read and then great athleticism that's 1400 yards 20 touchdowns they have to replace this year's Barrett Trotter Barrett Trotter is a more traditional drop back style quarterback Dyer has to pick up the slack here this is a pure handoff there's no read component Dyer and McCaleb have to pick up the slack and they've done that so far this year on the other side, you've got Clemson led by Taj Boyd, a sophomore quarterback. They haven't been, they haven't won an ACC title in 20 years. Is Boyd the guy to get him there? Well, he can be the guy, and this is why. You have Dabo Sweeney and Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, saying that he has to become a factor in the run. Right now, this offense is operating about a 50% capacity as far as execution. In order to get to the 80 to 90 to 100%, he's got to be a factor in the run. If he's a factor running the football, they're a threat. If he's not running the football, they're not a threat. It's that simple. Uh, both teams have struggled so far defensively. Both teams have big plays in their arsenal on offense. And we come back, one of the great traditions in college football, the run down the hill to Death Valley. This is ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. But here it comes, and they call it the most exciting 25 seconds in college football, the run down the hill. Defending BCS champs away, Dabo Sweeney. And the Clemson Tigers, many feel a critical year for him and this program after a 6-7 and seven season in 2010. Gene Chizik's Auburn Tigers went 14-0 for their first national championship in 50-plus years, off to a 2-0 start this year. But all things new, not just at quarterback, but on defense. A lot of new faces for the Tigers. Auburn has won the toss, elected to receive, so two true freshmen, speaking of youth, are back. Juan Bray and Trey Mason. Spencer Benton will boot it away. A short kick fielded by Mason on the 18, and he's upended at the 24. Our Chick-fil-A impact players led by Barrett Trotter, junior, 22 years of age, five touchdowns and a pick so far this year. We have Michael Dyer, 
If you like your backs with both speed and power, you're looking at your guy. Has the ability to go to distance anytime he gets his hands on the ball. Clemson nose guard Brandon Thompson. This environment against a true freshman center, first time quarterback has potential to disrupt this Auburn offense. Yeah, that center, Reese Dismukes, signed in December. And he's making his third start. First on the road. Awfully hard to hear as it is. And of course, in the Auburn offense, the quarterback's in the shotgun. Dave really watched number 98 Thompson in his first year center. The cadence, the one thing the offense has advantage over the defense is knowing the snap count. That's completely negated in this environment. Thompson, a three year starter. He's the bell cow on defense. We've got a clock issue, and that's why we have not snapped the football, snapped the football yet. This is where we have a young team. You settle it down. You settle it down on both sides. What I mean, sometimes you try to get too fancy. You want to make sure your communication with the offense and everybody's on the same page. And on the defensive side, Kevin Steele wants to play safe. You don't want to get caught up in a chess match with these guys early on until you get a feel for what each other is trying to do. I'll tell you, Chris, the key is the two offensive guards helping that center out. That's going to be a key point of this game. Know where 98 is and help him out. Down there, Thompson right now, he's talking mess. He's there pointing across the finger, saying, bring it on right now. Let's get it on, as Mills Lang used to say. Ontario McCaleb is the running back. And Trotter will throw out into the flat. And Trevon Reed is out to only the 27, so a gain of two on first down. And this is where the game on defensively, both sides have to execute, is you got to do open field tackling. You got to be sure of your tackle. Not big hits, just get the man on the ground. Trotter. Oh. Have a handoff here and a big hole off the right side for true freshman Trey Mason. Just his fifth attempt of the season. It's a 15 yard pickup. Here's a jet sweep once again, trying to take the ball out of the hand of the quarterback. Give it to the backs, give it to Dyer, and let them, let them run the ball. Good job of crackbacking by the wide receivers, getting a hat on a hat on the perimeter defenders of Clemson. Penalty flag down, movement by Auburn. Well, one of the keys coming into this game when you have a young team and first time starters, new quarterback. Part of the snap, full stop, 77 offense, five yard penalty. True freshman center Auburn has not faced noise with these guys and these players yet this year so That's going to be an adjustment for them to get used to you got AJ Green there the guilty man He's starting at left tackle coming off a knee injury hurt in the Clemson game a year ago So first and 15 at the Auburn 37 and no running room for Mason brought down after a gain of one by Andre Branch Yep. Here the quarterback is going to read the defensive end. This should be a pull all the way. If they're going to run this style of offense and try, he has to pull that and get positive yardage. That was a pull read all the way. That's a zone replay we talked about earlier in the game. Pull, you mean he keeps it and runs. He keeps it. And here's a reverse. Reed with blockers and gets clubbed at the 47 yard line a gain of about nine Jonathan Meeks on the stop so third down and about four coming up let me tell you why that's a good call by Gus Malls on because you got a defense it's all fired up they're running the ball so you run some type of misdirection get them over pursuing you hope you hit a big one third and four from the Auburn 48 yard line Trotter with his throw over the middle that's incomplete. Intended for Emery Blake. Covered by Cody Sensabaugh. Fourth down. That's the key. Clemson athletically can match up with Auburn athletically on the edges. What that allows them to do is play defense in tight man-to-man -man coverage. You're going to make Bear Trotter throw strikes. That wasn't a strike. Stephen Clark will boot it away. DeAndre Hopkins is the deep man for Clemson.
And he'll set up the return here. And it's going to be fair caught by Hopkins at the 12 yard line. Let's take a look at our Chick fil A impact players. Taj Boyd, the Clemson quarterback, played in seven games a year ago, but he's the man now for the Clemson Tigers. Tight end Dwayne Allen needs to be an integral part of this offense. Last, so far this year, three receptions. The second team all season, ACC, one of the best tight ends in America. The leader of the Auburn Tiger defense, Nico Thorpe, will be very involved in becoming a run stopper, the leading tackler, as you can see, with 20 tackles so far this season. And back to the point you mentioned about Dwayne Allen, one of the reasons his catches are down is because of the offense. Totally different offense. In fact, it is the same offense that Auburn runs, as opposed to the pro-style I formation we saw from Clemson last year. And Boyd will pull it back, and he'll find Allen, and he's across the 15, got about five on first down. You know, he's too good of a player not to get involved in the offense, and I like what Chad Morris is doing there. Again, you don't want to show everything against the first two opponents that they played. But now against Auburn, it's an important game. Get your best player involved and get him involved early. Game of four. Andre Ellington in the backfield, a dynamic tailback. And on the inside run, Watkins gets close to the first down. Looks like he'll be about a yard shy. Watkins, a true freshman. Similarity between both offenses, guys, is right there. We saw a jet sweep as Urban talked about to Trey Mason for Auburn. Right there, Sammy Watkins, the speedster, the true freshman from Florida. Again, get the ball into your playmaker's hands any way you can. They're all home run hitters. Watkins, the first two games, had 16 touches. Already won on the opening possession. Here's Ellington on third and one. And he cannot get away from Darren Bates. Brought down short of the first down. It's fourth, and we'll see Clemson punts the football. Well, the strength of Clemson should be their offense line. A lot of veteran players, a young defensive line by Auburn. That was disappointing by Clemson. You have to make that first Here's down. The deal. When you got a safety coming up, blowing a 320-pound offensive guard in Antoine McLean, you're not going to win at the line of scrimmage. I mean, you hope your safety can, or your card can take a safety. We saw the we, we've seen that on film, yeah. Chris. We were watching it. Clemson O-line has got to come out and play to it. We get a little more physical. Zimmerman the punt to Trevon Reed. And this is a good kick. Reed under it. Fair caught on the Auburn 31. 47-yard punt. No return, no score early at Clemson. Auburn and Clemson, no score early. Urban, both teams run the spread. How do you defend the spread run game? Well, both teams utilize a zone replay. You hear that all day. There's two ways to defend it. One is base, and that's fundamentals of technique to stop them. The defensive end will have the C gap, the wheel linebacker, the B gap. The second way is change up, and that's put the defensive end on the B gap. The linebacker scraped the C. That's called gap exchange. You have to keep them on balance. That's the only way to defend them. Auburn needs to do that today. Why look for it as we progress through the game? Because Clemson's offensive line has a very difficult time handling movement and stunts up front. Well, the one thing, a gap exchange, you can force your quarterback to be the player. How many hits can he take against a good defense? Cam Newton, 6'5", 250, could take more than Barrett Trotter. Trotter, 6'2", 207. And he'll throw to McCaleb out of the backfield, and he's got Green in front of him. And knocked out of bounds at the 48-yard line. That's 17 yards and a first down. Meeks made the stop. We can see both offenses in the first series handed off a jet sweep. Here they fake the jet sweep to set off the pass. The one thing, if you get the jet sweep going, that's where you hand it off the guy running across. It sets up the inside run and also the play action pass. Tenth catch for McCaleb. He and Dyer both in the game here. It'll be Dyer off right edge, and Dyer could be gone inside the 20. Dyer will score. 52-yard touchdown run. He had a 
35 yard touchdown run against Mississippi State last week takes this one in from 52 his fifth rushing touchdown already this year validate why he's an impact player. Parkey on for the extra point. And Auburn with a 7 0 lead. Well, we talked about it, the impact player. Here's why. You want speed? Number five has it. You want power? Number five has it. You want six points? Number five has it. Football on ABC. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, Sports, and Aviva. We are building insurance around you. 7 0 Auburn with the early lead. The MVP from the BCS championship game a year ago was Michael Dyer. Rushed for 143 yards against Oregon. Ended up breaking the Auburn freshman rushing record. And that's saying something with all the backs they've had there, including Bo Jackson and Dyer already this year, over 250 yards through two games in four minutes. Cody Parkey, who already has eight touchbacks this year, booming that one to the back of the end zone. Watkins will take a knee. It will come out to the 20. Well, Urban Meyer talked about it, the stretch play. You're going to have a crack back here on this level. You're going to have Lutzenkirk and Seal, Pooler, Pooler. McCaleb's going to come here to hold the backside. you got Michael Dyer doing what he does. Run for the Roses. Beautiful, well executed. Look at those big offense linemen. Get downfield, not give one for one. Seal the corner. Then when you have breakaway speed with power and explosiveness like Dyer, you're going to make up for those yards that Cam Newton got you last year. Clemson's offense back on the field. Boyd out in the flat. Ellington can't hang on. It's incomplete. Incomplete pass on first down. Now don't underestimate how important a quick start is for Auburn because the first two games their defense has been awful. There's no other way to describe it. So for their confidence and for them to get going they needed a quick start. And I know that Ted Roof who does a fine job the defensive coordinator is jacked up about how his boys are playing right now. Ellington. And he gets upended by cornerback Chris Davis, who the coaches say has really come on. He's shaken up on the play. Davis, a sophomore, first year starter. Okay, now one thing to keep in mind as Chris Davis has looked at, they're going to bring a new corner into the game. So when you bring a new corner into the game, if I'm Chad Morse and Dabo Sweeney, I'm going to test that new corner. I'm going to see if he's warmed up. I'm going to see if he knows what he's doing, and I'm going to try to test him. I'm going to throw a pass his way. I'm going to run right at him, and we'll see. And Chris Davis is being looked at. Let's take a look at the, how the injury came. He does a great job of corner coming up and, and filling and making good contact, which corners are good tacklers. Sometimes that's an oxymoron, but he does a good job avoiding the block, and you see he gets a knee to the head, which is tough. They're still looking at Chris Davis. We'll be back with more in a moment. Road test weekend continues tonight on ABC as Landry Jones and number one Oklahoma face Florida State, which should be a great one in Tallahassee. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines. Chris Davis out, freshman Jonathan Mincy in. Coach, what do you do if you're Clemson on third and nine? Well, it looks like it's going to be man coverage. I'm going to take a shot at their new corner, Jonathan Mincy, like Chris Spielman said. Boyd will throw, and instead goes the other side, out of bounds. Pass was high, intended for Allen. Nico Thorpe on the coverage. He would have been well short had he caught it anyway. Fourth down. The deal to me, Taj Boyd had his mind made up where he's going. I mean, you have to take your shot and understand where the first down marker is. If you have tight coverage before the first down marker, if you're going to make a tough throw, make the throw past the first down marker. So second straight three and out for Clemson. And Zimmerman will punt it away to Trevon Reed. The 
This is a short kick. And Reed slips and goes down, but still good field position for Auburn on the 46. Quint Kestick now down on the field with an update on the clock issues. Yeah, we have a malfunction of the play clock in the left end zone, so the officials turn both off. Now, the play clock then the 40-second clock is kept by the back judge, Stephen Patrick, and he'll give the quarterback, a, this is a 10-second count here, down to a five, down to no time left. So the adjustment has to come from the quarterback and his eyes, not upstairs, but to that back judge. Guys, how hard is that for the quarterback? Oh, that's not hard, especially, you no, know, they're up-tempo, they're going, they're not, the time clock will not be an issue in this game. Barrett Trotter to throw on first down, and it's dropped, and it was a forward pass intended for Trey Mason, so second down and 10. We've all, we've seen all three running backs, Michaela, Dyer, and Mason getting into the action here early. We already have a change at the middle linebacker, Stephon Anthony, one of the top prep uh, linebackers in America a year ago, was in. And coach has said he play early and often. Number 12. Trotter to throw again. And it's pulled in close to a first down by Trevon Reed. And he's got it to gain of about 13. I'll tell you, Trotter is completing 72% of his passes. That was an excellent throw. Watch out. He's got some zip on that thing. That was not that loose of coverage. Excellent by Trotter. Meanwhile, a new quarterback, at least for this play, Kyle Frazier, a true freshman. And he will hand it off here. Michaela trying to get outside. And he can't gain of only one. Xavier Brewer made the play. Well, the one thing about this offense that we talk about, both coaches agree that the quarterback has to be a running factor for this offense to operate at its utmost efficiency. That's why Frazier's in the game. Handed the ball off. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him throw the football so you can give more to the defense to think. The guy Gus Malzahn, the offensive coordinator, has been recruiting, he told us, since 2006. Off play action, Trotter in trouble, flag down. Likely a holding call on A.J. Green as Trotter just throws it away. The one thing about Gus Malzahn, he's going to take that shot when they cross the 50-yard line. And he tried to. The quarterback did a nice job getting rid of the ball, but you're, you're in a tough situation. Now it's going to be second down and 20. And if that's on Green, that's his second penalty already here in the first quarter. Holding. Offense 77. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. He does a good job of protecting his quarterback at all costs, but it costs 10 yards working on Branch. Branch does a nice job of dipping and ripping and getting the angle and turning the corner where the offensive tackle. Green has no chance but two hold to protect his guy. You know, a year ago, you have Cam Newton, you put Frazier in the game, you're on a quarterback draw. They don't have that luxury. Look for a screen or a draw to the back right here to get back on schedule. Second and 19 at midfield. Trotter. On the draw, and Clemson not full. McCaleb slammed down for a loss on the play. It's Courtney Brown and Rennie Moore there for Clemson. That's a, a great job of Ur Urban alerting to see Courtney Brown reading it. Urban knows that they can run a screen and draw. I know they can run a screen and draw. Kevin Steele knows that they can run a screen and draw. He's the defensive coordinator for Clemson. Big indicator. Trotter with a half roll on third and 20, and it is caught, but short of a first down by about three yards by Trevante Stallworth. Do you go for it here on fourth down? Absolutely. Auburn, you, you, with this kind of style of offense, Gus Malzahn, the style of play, especially the success they've had early, they're going to go for it. It's go time. You know, I, I would probably have Michael Dyer in the game. He's not. You have McCaleb in there, has your lone back. Might get him out on a little bit of an option route, matched up with the linebacker, number 23. Trotter to throw on fourth down and four. Looking deep, carrying it out, got a man, it's caught. Touchdown, Emory Blake on fourth down. He may not 
beat Cam Newton in terms of a runner, but showing he can be a pretty good passer. That was right on the money on fourth down. We're very impressed so far with this kid throwing the ball. Now that out cut on third down earlier in the series, tremendous and obviously a great throw right there. 14 nothing Auburn on Trotter's sixth touchdown pass. Emory Blake's third touchdown catch of the year. 14 zip protein. Through the first two games, Auburn scoring drives average just under two minutes. Right now, they're averaging one minute on their two scoring drives in this game. Another touchback. That thing went 80 yards. I'll show you about the patience of Trotter. Right here, you're going to have Emery do a little curl and go. Now, the problem is, is this guy, your safety. Watch what he does. He's going to bite. He's got a deep help. That means you're not making that play. You have deep as the deepest, and I guarantee you Gus Malzahn saw that, set him up for it. Watch a little curl and go. Good patience by Blake to sell. Trotter sitting in the pocket with patience, letting the letting play develop. Trust. It's all about trust. Yeah. Trotter's trusting his line. Blake's trusting Trotter. Six points. No excuse for that safety to jump down. No. On the end around, there's just no running room loss of about three on the play. Let's go to the studio and say hello to Scott Van Pelt. Scotty. Hey, Dave. Now for our AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. Kellen Moore, a career high in completions with 32 last night. Against Toledo, five touchdown passes in the process. Text vote to 55862 from your mobile phone to vote and for a chance at a trip to the national championship. Back now to Death Valley. Gentlemen. And a catch and a gain of about seven or eight as Hopkins pulls it in, but it brings up third down and six or seven. Clemson still without first down. This is as big a play for Taj Boyd as he's had in his young career. He has to get this first down to get Auburn offense, keep Auburn's offense off the field. That's for his confidence level. And for the team's confidence in Taj Boyd, that's why this play is so important to rest the Clemson defense. Pumps, gets hit, and delivers a strike for a first down. Out to the 40-yard line, it's Jerron Brown for 16 yards. Well, that's the patience right there. Taj Boyd using his eyes to create the receiver some room to get open. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Again, he uses his eyes with the pump, has a slant inside, and delivers a catchable ball so his receiver does not have to work, keep his feet to get rack yards, run after catch. Here's Ellington trying to pick a hole. Gets about three. Ellington missed six games after a toe injury a year ago. Big time player though, had 12 total touchdowns his first seven games a year ago before that injury. So he certainly has big playability. Would have been a well over 12, 1300 yard back. He had 688 yards without playing in six games. Boyd has time. Downfield throw way too high. Intended for Jerron Brown, who appeared open. Nico Thorpe in the vicinity for Auburn. He's got to make that throw. I, I know that's the master of the obvious. But, and I, and I keep going back to why. Well, as the game progresses, he's going to make that throw. He's a little excited right now. But his teammates need to trust that he's going to make that throw. You're not going to get that open every play. You've got to convert. Boyd throwing. It's Ellington on a screen. And he cannot get away from Jake Holland. It'll bring up fourth down. Good play in the open field by the sophomore linebacker. Here's, here's what Auburn's doing defensively. And, they, and Clemson's got to get on the sidelines and start drawing man beaters. Because all they're doing is saying, we're lining up against your edge players, and we're going to play you man-to-man. -man. We are better than you. When you have a linebacker making a tackle on the screen and man-to-man, -man, that tells me that your offensive linemen are too slow because they have an offensive lineman assigned to Jake Holland. He's got to block him. Hey, Chris, watch here. This is the momentum's all on Auburn's side. Watch for a fake punt. You're right at midfield. This is the ideal team to run, time to run one. Stead Zimmerman boots it away, and it's a good kick. Might be too good. It's actually fielded in the end zone. You wonder, did he have any idea where he was as Reed takes it out, tackled at the five. Horrible mistake by Richard freshman Trevon Reed, fielding it in his end zone and then taking it out. The 56 yard punt. The rule number one is a punt returner. Put your heels on the 10 yard line. Don't back up. 
That should be first and 10 Auburn on the 20 yard line. Critical error. That's a type of thing that could swing momentum, right? Yeah, the field position change is, is ridiculous. Did a good job of covering up though. Get what you can get. From the four, and Trotter will set up shop in the end zone. Out of the shotgun. And Clemson coming on a blitz. And Dyer able to keep his balance and get six yards out to the ten. You know, I know that's only a six-yard game, but Michael Dyer got the six because it was well executed by Clemson defense. But when you have your middle linebacker Hawkins sitting in the hole, touching his toe to get him down, you got to make that open field tackle at two yards as opposed to the six-yard game. That's what Michael Dyer does though. Run play and out across the 10 to the 12 is Mason. So he'll be a couple of yards short. Renny Moore on the stop. Third and two. I know what defensively you do. You have to play man to man. You have to match up. If you play zone, it's just pitch and catch. You line up and play man and bring pressure, you have a chance. All right, their athletic quarterbacks in the game. Kyle Frazier, look for him on a cute draw, a cute sweep. He hands it off here to Michaela, who has the first down easily. Out to the 20 for eight yards. Let's talk about how to defend that. All right, you cannot get hooked. You have to have edge players. When he's coming across like that with speed, you as a defensive end have to get outside. Right now, you can't worry about it. There's no inside threat. Get outside. The linebackers will take care of the inside threat. Straight ahead, Dyer gets tagged. At the 25, it's still four yards on the play. You can see what's happening here with Trotter and Frazier. They're getting a little bit of a curveball. Every time Frazier comes in, they're running the power bash. Same offense they ran a year ago with Cam Newton. And then they have Trotter throwing the ball at a 70, 75% clip. That's pretty lethal offense right now. Dyer and Michaela both out there on second down. Here's Dyer trying to get around his tackle and a good play. Malachi Goodman, a first-year starter, got away from the offensive tackle and made the stop. It's third down. Because it's third and six, do you keep Trotter in? If it was third and two, do you go to Frazier? That's a little bit similar we do with Tim Tebow and Chris Sig. That's exactly what we do. Here we got Trotter in and and deliver a downfield pass. Man to man coverage. Got to get to the 31. And Trotter has time. Now the pocket breaks down. Trotter broke a tackle, stumbled, and eventually fell for no gain. Branch and Brown there for Clemson. It's fourth down. Yeah, that's what we refer to as a coverage sack. We'd say lined up and played man to man. Did a good job. And Trotter showed good patience. Cam Newton, I think, if we're going to make comparisons, which is not fair to Trotter, he made that decision quicker. He tucks it. He probably gets the first, Coach. You know, Chris, I think your, your comparison to Steve Young when you were a player about getting those third down and four, third down and fives. When you play man coverage, you better be careful. That quarterback's going to scramble some Killer. first down. Hopkins, the deep man for Clemson. And fair caught at the 40, so the best field position yet for Clemson. This week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, Sam Bradford and the Rams take on the Giants. New York coming off a loss to the Redskins last week. Coverage starts 7 Eastern. Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Fourteen nothing Auburn. A 52 yard rushing touchdown by Michael Dyer and a long touchdown pass by Trotter to Emory Blake. Best field position so far for Clemson. Time to get it going, Taj Boyd. Boyd to throw on first down, and it's pulled in across the 45. It's Watkins for a gain of eight. Let's check in with Quint down on the field. Well, Clemson offense today, uh, their normal left guard, David, David Smith, out this week with an injury. Mason Cloy got the start. Well, guess what? He's in the locker room right now. His lower leg being looked at, and they have a new man at left guard. It looks like Brandon Thomas, number 63. And he was listed as the backup left tackle. 
Here's Ellington being patient, finding a hole, and picking up a first down to the Auburn 44-yard line for about eight yards. And remember, Auburn came in here 118th in rushing defense in the country. And so the problem was alignment. So what Ted Roof and the game plan clearly is, is they're going to line up and play a lot of man coverage. Why? Because man eliminates thought. I got this guy, you got that guy, I got this guy. It's that simple. First snap for Clemson in Auburn territory. And downfield goes Boy. It is juggled and it is incomplete. Good recovery by Ryan White. Sammy Watkins, the intended receiver. I'll tell you, Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator for Clemson, a protege of Gus Malzahn. You cross that 50-yard line, they're going to take a shot. Sammy Watkins, 200-meter champion out of Florida, ran by his guy. He's got to go up and make that catch. The ball is slightly underthrown. You see it had to turn and come back, which allowed Ryan White, who never gave up on the play, to make a play by going up and playing the receiver's hands. You guys like the call there in first half? I love it. And Boyd on the keeper. I think it's pummeled at the 38-yard line, but a good pickup of about six. El Toro Freeman made the hit to Sharvin Bell in there as well, and Bell a little shaken up. Todd, and now Taj Boyd, he's a thick Nick. I mean, he's a thick guy. And this is what we were talking about. And for this offense at Clemson, and even Auburn, they'll, they'll invent ways to get guys the ball. But at Clemson, for this offense to be at its fullest capacity as far as efficiency goes, Taj Boyd has to be a runner. That's a good job. That's a five-yard gain. And you have to account for him now because he finally showed, which he did in the first few games, of tucking and running. You see his numbers on today. By the way, Chris Davis, corner who started for Auburn, got dinged earlier, is back on the field. Third and five, Boyd, and open in the middle of the field is Watkins, and the true freshman picks up the first down and 12 yards. Now, Irvin, I think one of the man beaters is when you get bunch coverage, bunch wide receivers, or all three guys are over to the right of your screen right there, tight together. What that does is set natural picks for the wide receivers to knock off the defensive backs. And again, Taj Boyd is growing up right now before our eyes. From inside the 30, Boyd to the air, going deep, and it's caught by Hopkins at the five. Brought out of bounds by Mincy. It'll be first and goal. Taj Boyd is growing up. This is a back shoulder throw against high coverage, which means the corner's way on top. That's, that's well coached, that's well executed. That's college football right there. 23-yard pickup, first and goal at the four. Watkins in the backfield, along with Ellington. And Boyd will keep nowhere to run. Grabbed from behind by Darren Bates. May have even lost a yard on the play. All right, for defensive lineman to play good, he might play good, not make a tackle. But when he plays good, he makes a big pack of rear ends. What I mean, he makes a pile in the middle of the field. The inside interior defensive lineman of the Auburn Tigers did a great job of creating a pile, forcing Taj Boyd to slow down. Then pursuit comes and gets him. And that's the end of the first quarter. Auburn on top, 14-zip, ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Auburn on top, 14-0, the first three drives for Clemson that had one first down. They've got three first downs on this drive and a second and goal at the four. Watch for tight end Dwayne Allen running option route, single coverage. Number 15 has a man-to-man. -man. And Boyd instead throws over the middle end zone, and it's caught. Touchdown, DeAndre Hopkins. And need that. And the point after makes it 14 7 Auburn. Second touchdown catch of the year for Hopkins. Well, Clemson ran a slant flat. Tight end Allen to the flat. And you have a slant coming right behind him. What a great job by Taj Boy to sit on that back foot. Look at that Hopkins. 
Well, that's well executed play down the red zone. Now. That's trusting your guy to run the route. Taj Boyd was patient and he threw his guy open. What that means is he's going to throw the ball and trust that his receiver makes the play. You know, Chris, you fastball too in there, but that was, that was you know, a lot. You know, our discussion right before that we we're talking about it's going to be man coverage. You know, it's going to yeah. be man coverage. Other than running, like you said, maybe a speed sweep, there's not a better throw you can have other than a slant round against outside leverage man. And there's no such better play. Here's the important thing about that is that the quarterback and receiver are reading the corner. If the corner's playing press coverage, they're going to run a fade. If the corner was off a little bit, which they both read, they're running a slant, and that's not a, it's a touchdown. It's very difficult to stop down there in the red zone. So that's, that's the growth of Taj Boyd. Recognize it. Now the question is, can Clemson stop Auburn? We've seen them march down the field and score, but can they stop Auburn and the Tigers' offense? They've had big plays. Big play in the pass game, big play in the run, big game for Auburn so far. Well, that drive gave them a chance to make adjustments and get rested and ready to go play some Clemson defense. Benton kicking deep. Trey Mason. He's not going to get to the 15. Good coverage by Clemson. First man there is Cantrell Brown. Take a look now at our Pacific Life game summary. Michael Dyer with a touchdown run. Barrett Trotter, a touchdown pass. And then Boyd, a touchdown pass for Clemson. You know, we talked about what can Clemson do. Well, here's an adjustment that needs to be made. They got to defend the edge. What Auburn's doing is they're outflanking. They're getting more guys on the outside, creating a short corner, and it's easy pickings around the edges. They're not having an inside running attack. All their yards are being produced on the edges or the outside of the offense. Juan Bray is in the game running the Wildcat. And he'll fake the handoff and find running room right down the middle of the defense. Got close to nine out to the 19-yard line. Quandon Christian, the first man there for Clemson. They're drawing straws. we got to find a way to pick up 1,400 yards. We'll put a wide receiver back there. We'll put a running quarterback back there. I'm sure they have Wildcat in their offense. He will find a way to manufacture those yards from the quarterback position. Bray, a high school quarterback, so no surprise he's back there running the Wildcat. Trotter is back in the game now at quarterback. And he'll give to Michaela trying to get around the defensive end branch. He does and picks up a first down and about seven. Here's Scott Ben Pelt in the studio. This Taco Bell studio update. Danny O'Brien and the Terps going for the Johnny Cash man in black look. But after a 10 play 88 yard touchdown drive for West Virginia, O'Brien here picked by Terrence Garvin. He'll take it all the way the other way. West Virginia has added a field goal, and they've just picked O'Brien again. A 14-point lead for the Mountaineers in the second. Back to Death Valley. And a seven-point game here, Scott. Auburn on top. First down on their 25-yard line. Here's McCaleb again, and he spun down in the backfield by Rennie Moore, who's been pretty active. There's Michael Dyer on the sideline. He was shaken up on the previous play, but we'll see if he returns shortly. That's a good thing you don't have trainers and doctors looking over. Here's the deal. Clemson's solid inside. Remember, we have Brandon Thompson, number 98. He's holding a fort down there. The adjustments that need to be made is the outside running where you need to force the ball back inside to the pursuit of the defense. They have not made that adjustment. Here's second and nine, low snap. Trotter going deep, and the pass is overthrown. A flag, definitely interference. There was contact inside the 35-yard line. Quindarius Carr bumped by Xavier Brewer. Pass interference, defense number 31. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. See, Xavier Brewer looks back for the ball. Mm. Well, I don't know, Chris. That's that, tough. That's, that's it over contact, man. Yeah. The receiver slows down. Yeah. He slows down. I, I see it. Don't like it. But I see it. And with all the man that we're seeing, we're going to see a lot of shots taken down the field today. Deep passes. So first down to the Auburn 41. And here comes a reverse to Reed. And he's in trouble in the backfield and does a great job getting positive yardage. He should have lost a couple. Instead, he gained a couple. And now Brandon Thompson going to the Clemson sideline, their best player on defense. Well, we talk about this guy. He's a 
He's a some type of player. I think he's inside right here. You take a look at him right there, forcing the play, never quitting, coming back, and getting a good, solid shot. That's effort and hustle. That's why he's a solid player, the future NFL player. Michael Dyer back on the field for Auburn on second and eight. And Trotter, wide open lane, close to the first down. Nobody was expecting the keeper. He'll come up this, short, third down and one. Dave, this was the play exactly that we showed you in the pregame. He's going to read the defensive end. He closes. They don't gap exchange. The wheel linebacker does not do a good job. Trotter keeps it. They're not expecting this kind of style with Trotter at quarterback. What a, what a great job by yeah, Auburn. Number 40 done. branch, number 40 branch for Clemson defense, lost. Frazier is in the game at quarterback. True freshman, USA Today National Offensive Player of the Year in 2010. And he will keep and appears to have the first down. Hit initially by Malachi Goodman. Now he's an interesting story. Gus Malzahn, we mentioned, recruited Frazier starting five years ago. Frazier played high school ball where Gus Malzahn began to get attention. Malzahn was a high school coach for a long time. Shiloh Christian in Arkansas. Ended up coaching at Arkansas, then Tulsa for two years. Now in his third year here as the offensive coordinator. First down at the Clemson 47. Trotter looking downfield. There he gets out. And the pass is incomplete. The defender stepped in front. Trevon Reed looked like he should have caught it. Two points. What we talk about. You see a lot of man coverage. Start jacking the ball down the field. That's what Auburn's doing. That's what Clemson's going to do. You hit him here with a little stutter and go on the post. And they almost had it because you have Robinson taking a poor angle, not adjusting the football. But the other thing is, Clemson's gassed up front. There's absolutely no pressure from four pass rushers. Zero. Got to catch that football, right? Yeah. Well, you got to keep running and slow down. On second and ten. Another pass play. Trotter incomplete. There was some pressure that time. McCaleb, the intended receiver, as again, Renny Moore getting active on defense was in the backfield that time. Auburn led 14 0 after two big plays. A 52 yard touchdown run by Michael Dyer, and then a touchdown pass by Trotter as Brandon Thompson returns for Clemson, which scored on its last possession. Now trying to force a punt. Third down and 10 for Auburn. Arrested Brandon Thompson. Trying to set up a shovel pass. It's not there. Now Trotter looking downfield and going down to make the catch for a first down is Travante Stallworth. That's a gain of close to 20. You like composure and Trotter coach patience. You can see his eyes downfield, understanding his man coverage, and have the patience for his man to get open and throw where only he could get it. There's Dyer, and cannot get away from Branch, but what effort. He was down, and he just kept the feet moving. Terrific balance as well to get nine. He's got a chance to be special, huh? He's got speed and power, compact, always falling forward. Dyer again on second and one. And those dives past the first down marker to the 16 yard line. So a fresh set of downs here for Auburn. That's what Gus Malzahn does. He repeats plays. If they get seven or yard, seven yards or more in a rushing play, he's going to come right back to it. He just did that. It was the same play, just the opposite side. Remember this drive started back on about the 10 yard line. You got a tired Clemson defense out there right now. They take a T.O. They had to take a T.O. They got to get them some water, some rest, and regroup to keep out of the end zone. 12th play of the drive coming up for Auburn, leading 14-7 over Clemson. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary with Auburn on top, 14-7, and driving. You look at their rushing yard so far, 138 to only 19 for Clemson. Both teams decent on third down so far it's first down at the 16 do you keep it simple here because you've been getting a lot of yardage running the ball or do you go deep into your playbook no i think this is a time where a guy like gus mall's owner or we would try a trick play here this is a perfect example for a reverse pass a throwback something just to make sure clemson is playing honest here's dyer 
around the left side, breaks a tackle, and then steps out of bounds about two yards short of a first down at the nine-yard line. Cody Sensiball whiffed on the tackle attempt. Well, that's the thing. We talked to Kevin Still. <clears throat> when you miss a tackle like that, that's an indication of being tired. They only have 13 guys that they really can, can trust and go on because they have a lot of young players. If this game continues at this pace, Auburn will put 40 on because of the fatigue. On second and two at Dyer, left side again, and he's got the first down inside the five. Brought down by Rashard Hall. Andre Branch tripped him up. Now there is a penalty flag on the near side at the eight-yard line. Illegal motion on the offer from the 43. Five-yard penalty. That's on Lutzenkirk, and we've seen him in motion on the last two plays. Yeah, just follow him because he's going to take you to the ball every time if you're on TV. Watch 43, he'll take the ball. But the other thing is, that's a huge penalty for Clemson. Why? Because it gives them hope again. Because they keep driving it down the field. Now you get that a do-over, and if I'm the linebacker or the captain of that huddle, I said, that's it. That's our second chance. Everybody rally right now. It's our time. There's McCaleb, and he's wrapped up at the 10. He got four of it back, and now penalty flags fly in. Could be a face mask here based on where that flag was thrown and the way McCaleb went down. Branch and Sensabaugh on the stop. And that's my point, though. I mean, if the indicator that you have, if I'm Kevin Steele, I get those guys over. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 15, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Follow 43, gentlemen. If you're at the second level, look at nothing else but 43, and you'll see the penalty right here. Yeah, definitely turn the face mask there, Sensabaugh. He will take you to the ball. So now another, another sign of fatigue is when you start dabbing that face mask instead of good form tackling. So now it's first and goal. Have to get a little momentum if you're Clemson following the Auburn penalty. Give it right back. It's Dyer. Finds a hole and then gets leveled at the three-yard line by Meeks. Hawkins had Dyer at the ankles at second and goal. I mean, how good is it, Urban, to run this type of offense to have a running back that hits it downhill? I mean, they, that's what you want. Second and goal to two. Dyer again. Dyer stood up at the one. Trying to stretch forward, does not get in. So third down and goal, same play, back to Dyer, or something different. Same play, I think you hammer it right now, you got him reeling, you're inside the one yard line. Let Dyer finish the drive. Dyer's calling for the ball. And he's earned it, he's earned it this drive. Give him six, run the same play, get a pulling guard to power, get behind Lux and Kirkin, see if you can knock her in. They got Dyer lined up as the Wildcat quarterback here. He's the fourth guy we've seen lined up in shotgun for Auburn. Third down from the one. Dyer in. Touchdown, Auburn. Dyer's second score today. All the motion means nothing. They're running to 43. That's their game plan. Lutz and Kirkin did a good job of sealing and cutting. Easy pickings. You know, they, they just ran off tackle power four different ways in the last five, six plays. And how many different guys? Off tackle power is a gap scheme where you pull the backside guard and you either give it to the tailback Dyer, or that time you did it with direct snap to him out of the single wing. That's no different than eye formation, downhill, off tackle power. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Cadillac. Was it louder last night when Nikki Meyer took center stage in volleyball for Georgia Tech? Spielman and Urban looking on. I was a participant on Thursday for the beatdown of Furman, but apparently they didn't have uh, the same kind of luck last night. Well, we, uh, Coach Spielman and Coach Meyer were doing a good job trying to help them defeat Furman. We didn't do a very good job the next night against Clemson. We couldn't defend the slide. Yeah, I the learned a, I learned a volleyball play to slide. Oh, How good is that to get to see that, though? Uh, good for you, although you had the worst-looking cheerleader in America <laughs> next to you. I'll take him any time, though. <laughs> Nikki played well, though, in defeat. Yeah, she was just uh, very proud of him. Good lateral movement. I make a linebacker strong safety out of her. <laughs> Always scouting. Short kickoff. And Ellington will not reach the 20. 
It's time now for our Aflac trivia question with Auburn on top, 21 to seven. Gene Chizik, one of three coaches to win a BCS championship with less than five years head coaching experience. Can you name the other two? I got one. What do you got? One of the coaches. Want me to guess? Yeah. It's got to be Stoops. I think the other one might be the guy at Miami, Larry Coker. Came out of Butch Davis's staff and won a national championship. First down at the Clemson 19 yard line, trailing by two scores again. And here's Watkins with a running lane down the near sideline. Out of bounds at the 44, a 25 yard pickup. And nice job by Andre Ellington sealing the corner. Letting Watkins get out. Watch number 23, Andre Ellington, right there. Just enough to make a short corner for a 200 meter champion. Speed kills. Midway through the second quarter. Clemson trailing in the first half for the third time in three games this year as Ellington powers forward for five yards to the 49. It'll bring up second and five tackle made by Nosa Igwe starting defensive end. I'm going to ask Coach uh, his perspective. They want to get the ball snapped with 25 seconds to go on the, on the play clock. Do you want to do that if your defense is exhausted or do you slow it down? Play fake and Boyd looking to throw and it's caught by Brown breaks a tackle and spins out of another one to get the first down. Great effort there. I'll tell you, Chris, there's no question. The job is to get a at this point right now, get first downs however you can. Keep them off the field. How about the effort here by Jerron Brown with 32 catches last year, breaks a tackle from to Sharvin Bell and then stretches forward, spinning out of McNeil's tackle attempt. First down to the Auburn 45. Here's a pitch, Ellington. And boy, those defensive linemen for Auburn can run. That's Nosa Igwe getting down the line. It's a nice job of a setup by Clemson, but a good job of discipline by Igwe. Not going and chasing the speed sweep to Watkins, yet playing his position, discipline, making a good open field tackle on Ellington. You face those kind of defensive linemen week after week in the SEC. A lot of those guys go on the next level and play for a lot of years. Nick Fairley was a defensive lineman last year. First round pick is boy. Goes deep, and it is incomplete. Thorpe looked like he was holding Martavis Bryant down the near sideline, but no flag. It's third and ten. A lot of contact down the left sideline. Man coverage. He's leaning back into him. I mean, the ball's in the air. How, how is that not? In well, the air? I think it's an uncatchable ball. Because yeah, I think that should have been pass interference unless the official made a decision. Now, he did step out of bounds there. As long as, long as he goes back out. in. As long as he goes yep. back in, he's okay. If he was forced out, which it appeared that he was. Did not go out on his own. Third and ten. And Boyd leveled, but he completes it anyway. And boy, what a shot. It's pulled in by Brown. Both the quarterback and the receiver got drilled and both popped to their feet. Great job by Taj Boyd hanging in there. That's a sign of toughness right there. It's a sign of toughness for a wide receiver when your quarterback throws you right in the middle of cover two with a safety. That's trusting that your receiver will make a play. Brown's made those plays. His enthusiasm is contagious. Sanders had the hit on the quarterback. Boyd throwing on first and ten, lobbing it, trying for Allen, incomplete. Looked like he had a step on a linebacker, Darren Bates. I tell you, Dave, I've been around football a long time. I've never seen both teams play at this tempo. I mean, you're going to get a lot of. There's probably going to be 160 plays, 80 plays each with the tempo. Every 15 seconds, they're snapping the ball. Second and ten at the Auburn 28. And here's that draw play, that wraparound handoff. Ellington walloped by Bates. Gain of only three, so third and long coming up. We have 35 plays by Auburn. We're still in the second quarter with six minutes left. You're talking once again about 70 to 80 plays in a college football game for each team. All right, so what's play 28 here for Clemson? Third down and seven. You're getting, you're getting man coverage. So you have a man beater. 
And you have Dwayne Allen right here lined up in the slot. Okay, Chris, looks like they have a blitz. They just took the safety. Okay, this is out. their check recheck. They just checked out of the blitz. Defense checked out of the blitz after the offense checked out of its original play. Boy, downfield, leaping catch inside the 10 by Allen. It's first and goal from the seven. Well, that's why we circled him. He's got to be a factor in this offense. He's got to be a factor in a big game. What this is is a smash corner. The smash route is the underneath. The corner route's over top. Taj Boyd does a good job of reading the corner, throwing the corner. If the corner's up, he throws deep. If the corner's back on Allen, he throws the underneath route. That's a good job of Taj Boyd trusting his eyes, seeing a corner, and throwing a corner. Here's Boyd on first and goal. Handoff, Ellington trying to get outside. Can't. Brought down by true freshman Enrique Florence. It'll be second and goal from the six after a gain of a yard. What a great opportunity here now. Spread the defense. You got Auburn tired. Spread them out. Let that quarterback want a quarterback draw right here. Spread them out though. You sideline to sideline. Get the linebackers out of the middle of the defense. Instead, they put everybody near the line of scrimmage. Go under center here, Boyd. Little half roll, looking for the throwback. Now has to just throw it away as there are two defenders in the backfield. Holland and Igwe for Auburn. It's third and goal. Here's the problem with play action. When you have play action on, it can work. But if you have play action against a blitz, it can't work. Ted Roof did a good job of bringing pressure. That was the throwback, right? Wasn't there? No, they tried to get no, it was not. They tried to get Ellington flat off the fake handoff off the play action the problem was you're only blocking with five against the pressure quarterback has no chance so it'll be third down and goal from the six when we come back timeout clemson the new season of dancing with the stars premieres monday september 19th 8 7 central on abc with our most surprising cast ever including soccer goalie hope solo and la laker ron artest 12th play of the drive for Clemson. They've had some big plays. 17, 18, and 25 yards on this drive. And a timeout called by Auburn. So two left for them. All it's right. a nice little call right there to see what uh, Chad Morris has in store. I'll tell you, Dave, right now you're, you're on the seven-yard line. That's just a little too far outside four-down territory. You get inside that 4-3, the communication is this. Hey, listen, uh, uh, Chad, Chad Morris, you have two downs to get this touchdown, so that changes your play call. Here on the seven-yard line, you got to take a shot in the end zone. Here's the other thing I'd say. They're going to play us, man. If, I, if I'm Dabo Sweeney, hey, Chad, they're playing us, man. Give me your best man beater. Give me a pick. Give me some type of roll. Give me a high low, but give me a man beater. Crossing routes. Well, let's go back to that. Who's the best matchup on the Clemson offense for man to man? It's that big tight end. Dwayne Allen, number 83. Now they scored off a slant, too. Remember, Brown has been active. Here's Brown, Dwayne Allen. Those two guys right there have been active in the red zone. Third and goal from the six yard line of Auburn. Boy has time. Back in the end zone. There's Allen. He's in. Touchdown, Clemson. See if he gets a foot down and maintains possession all the way to the ground. Got to complete the catch. It's going to be indisputable, and that's, in my eyes, pretty much indisputable. Let's see. Hey, Chris, that's a big man doing that now. That's 6'4", 255, going up, make that catch. Look like he... Maintain yeah. possession. You can't see the ball, and again, it has to be indisputable video evidence, evidence to overturn the ruling on the field, which is a touchdown. The now, let's see from this angle if you can see the ball a little bit better as he goes to the ground. Well, that's a touchdown. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. How big was that for Clemson to get six there? It's huge, not only for their offense, but more importantly for their defense. 
because you know you're still in it and you still have a chance as opposed to getting the ball shoved down your throat systematically each time Auburn gets the ball. Now you rally together and make a play. There were three of three on third down on that possession. The extra point makes it 21-14. Second touchdown pass today for Taj Boyd and Dwayne Allen with a touchdown grab in the back of the end zone for Clemson. Clemson pulls within seven. Chris, break down the touchdown four. Well, actually, we have a cover two here, and the same principle applies. Read the corner, throw the corner. Now watch the corner get nosy inside. Dwayne Allen's going to get to the corner. See the corner jump inside. When he jumps inside, Taj Boyd sees him jump inside and throws to the back pylon. It's a great read by Taj Boyd. Remember, folks, read the corner, throw the corner. He's inside, he's open outside. Got nosy, Dave. You got nosy. Can't get nosy. Play your play. Benton with the kickoff. And out of the end zone. It will come out to the 20. Even the kicker is fired up now. Our athletic trivia question answer. Gene Chiswick, one of three coaches doing a BCS championship, less than five years head coaching experience. Urban Meyer was six years, right, before he got the championship. What's the matter with you, man? <laughs> Slow start. <laughs> All right. You had one, Bob Stoops and Urban. You got the other, Larry Coker. Coker doing it his first year, Stoops in his second year. Gene Chiswick and his squad went 14 0. And they told us one of their hardest games last year was this game. It was home against Clemson. They were down in that game. 17-0 came back to win it in overtime. It was a springboard for the rest of the year. Here's a wraparound handoff and a draw. Clemson not fooled. McCaleb will lose close to five yards. Well, that's the first time I've seen Clemson right before the snap change the entire defense. Let's keep an eye on that. Right before the snap, I think they got the trigger, which the trigger means is they know when the quarterback's getting ready to take that snap in his noise. So second down. And 14 at the Auburn 16-yard line. And Brandon Thompson just rolls over the center. Reese dismukes. And a penalty flag down. And here's the reason why. Urban just made the great point. They had to trigger. Auburn knows they had to trigger because Auburn's right there with a little bit more patient. So what'd they do? They changed up the timing of the silent Outside. snap. Defense 98. You're right on it, Chris. That, that's, that's the chess match that goes on that a lot of people don't see. The nose guard, they're getting ready to jump because they thought they had the cadence. They come right back, change the cadence on, they get a five-year penalty. If you're Reese Dismukes, you're a true freshman playing your first ever road game. Does that hurt your psyche a little bit when you get run over like that? Just a touch. Just a touch. Well, he's playing well, though. He's hanging in there. He's got 21 points on the board. They're running the ball. Who's going to find Play action. Trotter. Everybody cover. Trotter on the run. And Trotter knocked down at the 28 by Brewer. So we got about seven, third down, and close to three coming up. One thing you want to do, uh, he's a valuable part of this Auburn offense. I'm seeing that today. Don't slide with your head first. Slide with your feet. I mean, that's, that's a, a, a little detail that I think is going to be vital to him staying healthy. Third and two officially. And Trotter going to throw. Flushed out of the pocket. And it's incomplete. Are you surprised they threw the ball there on third and short based well, on the way they've run it today? Absolutely. I mean, Dyer, Dyer's been lethal on his third down. And it's actually third in the long one. Oh, I agree with you, Coach. Dyer's been lethal. The only problem was he can't be lethal if he's on the bench. Now, he was shaking up earlier. He did come back, though, and appeared to be fine. Stephen Clark will punt it away here in fourth down and two. DeAndre Hopkins, who caught a touchdown earlier, is back to receive the kick. And fair caught, just shy of the 25-yard line. Sunday NFL Countdown on ESPN returns this season with a new start time at 10 a.m. Eastern. It features three hours of insight and analysis to get you ready for all the day's NFL action. ESPN 2, a new Sunday morning fall lineup starting with Outside the Lines. 10 a.m. Eastern concluding with Fantasy Football now at 11.30 a.m. Eastern.
You know, Dave, we've already had 70 snaps. There's almost four minutes still left in the first half. 70 snaps. We're looking at 150, 160 snaps by the end of the game. They're encouraging the defensive line who really stepped up that series, both stopping the run and pressure on the quarterback. Clemson offense back to work inside run and not much there for true freshman Mike Bellamy scored a 75 yard touchdown on his first career carry Clemson's offense get it going struggle the first three drives but look what they've done the last two both lengthy scoring drives no game for Bellamy so second and ten. Boyd being chased by Lemonier, and a low pass is caught. Gain of about seven. Watkins with a grab. Was Boyd unaware that the ball was being snapped? No, that's what we talked about in the game uh, last year. They're going to go on a fake cadence. If they feel the defensive line jump, the quarterback's going to, uh, the center's going to snap the ball to the quarterback. The offense line's not going to move. Auburn there jumped, but got back out of the neutral zone. Worked out that they, they still got seven yards out of the bus. Sure that worked out. Boyd on third and short wide open as Watkins in the teeth of the defense and he's to the 45 13 yards okay. and a Clemson first down. This is their money route. What they do is they three level you to one side. It's a man beater. They hit you a, a short mid level and deep and Taj Boyd just picks the poison delivers the football. Boy Taj Boyd looks like a different player here the last couple of the drive. And Boyd will throw on first down, short pass. Watkins makes Bates miss. Boy, is he quick, huh? Crosses the 50, gets about seven before D4 to defensive line and reaches him. Taj Boyd's comfort right now in the pocket. And that all starts up front. They're protecting him. His comfort level has really changed from early in the season to how, where he is now. How about just the skill level overall on the field today? A lot of number one recruits out there on both sides. Here's a pitch to Ellington. A cutback. First down. Takes it to the 40-yard line. Fresh set of downs for Clemson. This is down the line speed option. Taj Boyd doesn't come down. Pitch off the defensive end. Well blocked on the outside by the receivers. You see Dwayne Allen showing his worth. Not only as a receiver, as a blocker. Kicking out Holland to spring Ellington. I tell you, I love, I love Ellington. Now that's North South. He's got the speed, but he's also got the toughness to be a North South runner. And we talk about the talent on the field for Clemson. It was interesting. I know this was your first trip here, just seeing the campus and being around the fans. And you really get an appreciation for why so many kids want to come here. I'll tell you, when we first went to Florida, Clemson beat us on some players, and I got after a staff because I couldn't understand that. And Charlie Strong was my defense coordinator at the time. He, have you ever been to Clemson? I said, no. He said, coach, it's a nice place. And I've, I've been here. It's not a nice place. This is a heck of a place. This is a great place. Well, and that being said, Clemson has talent. They've always had talent. But we're talking about not going to a, a major bowl game in one of the big four in 30 years. Right. Now, they're young this year, and they're going to have a tough schedule. But if they stay with this talent and Taj Boyd stays healthy and continue to prove, they're a force to be reckoned with in not only the ACC, but all college football because of the level of talent that's here now, but frankly, has always been here. They have Florida State here, then at Virginia Tech the next two weeks. First down at the 40, play action. Looking deep is Boyd, going for Watkins. And that's gotta be a flag, it is. Interference against Ryan White. Dave, you made the mention of this on both sides of the ball. There's as, there's as good a young Passing skill the center, as anyone in America. Defense number 19. Penalty 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Ryan White could have helped himself. We always talk about this. Now watch Ryan White's head. When the slowdown of the receiver occurs, look and lean. Instead of running into him, when you see him slow down, that's when you turn your head back and look and lean. Then you're allowed to contact because you're going for the ball. But if you keep your head on the wide receiver and you make contact, you're eventually going to run into him. So if he slows down, look and lean right now. The rules, college and pro, are becoming more and more uniform. I'd love to see at some point that be a spot foul rather than 15 yards. Because if he doesn't interfere, it's a touchdown. First down at the 25. 
Boyd with time. Zips it over the middle, broken up and incomplete. Jerron Brown was the intended receiver. He, he may have broken it up himself, hit him in the hands. First of all, lucky that's not picked. Jerron Brown did a good job of just getting his hands on him because it was tipped. Yeah, it was tipped. Yeah. Taj Boyd's going to get him killed. That throw is not there. He's got to look to the outside because he's forcing that now into the middle of the field. Second and ten. Pressure coming. And Boyd going down the sideline. What a grab inside the five by the spectacular tight end, Dwayne Allen. It's first and goal at the two. Dwayne Allen runs a flat route against man coverage, and you can see him. He's turn up and run a wheel route. Excellent job looking back for the ball. And great ball placement by Taj Boyd. That's a man, you know, Chris Spielman has been talking about man coverage all day. That's just another great man beater. You look back on the flat route, turn up, and finish the play on the wheel. The linebacker can't hang with him, David. We had a great talk with Allen yesterday, junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. See if he's a factor here on the goal line. First down at the two. Ellington to the goal line. Touchdown, Clemson. Line up everybody to the right. You bring Deal, the fullback, and Allen back to the left. You have two lead blockers. Frank, all it is, frankly, is a power roll back to the left side. Third touchdown this quarter for Clemson. It looked for a while like Auburn might roll over Clemson. It was 14 nothing road team. But the home team has bounced back to tie. Well, you got to give credit where credit due. The guys around them are playing really well. But that quarterback's running the show right now. There's one boss out there, nice Taj boy. The other guys are playing well, but that quarterback has settled in to be a, a Division 1A quarterback in the last uh, 10 minutes. Well, he, for the most part, he's making the proper reads, and, and his receivers are making plays for him. Now, he's putting the ball in their hands so they don't have to do a lot of work, but his receivers are making plays, and they never lost confidence on the offensive side of the ball for this reason. Auburn coming in 118th in a rush and 100 and something else in the scoring defense. Is it possible because you had an offense change that they're just starting to figure out how this thing works? Absolutely. I and mean, one of the devils really made the comment, a big reason he changed that offense, he had a lot of confidence in Ty Boyd. You know, last year was more traditional, eye formation. He wanted to spread the field, let some of these athletes play, but he felt Ty Boyd could be his future. Matter of fact, he said he's going to be our future. And how about the mirror images, not just of the offenses, but the two offensive coordinators, Gus Malzahn and Chad Morris, both longtime high school coaches, both at Tulsa for a short period of time. Now at major programs in AQ conferences. The story of Chad Morris having, having a bad high school year. Gray and Mason deep for Auburn. Returnable for Mason. Hesitated on the goal line, and then he gets brought down to the 20. Guy who made the tackle. Mansa Joseph didn't even have a helmet on. Well, Chad Morris, Dave, didn't he fly down to visit Gus Malzahn during football playoffs to get all this? Yeah, several times. In fact, initially, Gus Malzahn wasn't sure about him. He didn't know if he wanted to divulge all that information. But Morris was so persistent, Malzahn eventually did. All of these coaches spent time looking at Urban Meyer's offense back when you were in Utah as well. First down, Auburn. On its 21, Trotter breaking the tackle is Reed, and he's still going across the 30-yard line, and finally stacked up at the 37 after a 16-yard gain. Under a minute to go, each team with a timeout remaining. A lot of teams on the road, backed up like they were, would sit on the ball, not Auburn. Right there, you had a guy chance to make an open field tackle. He misses the tackle because he drops to his knees, lowers his head. You can't hit what you cannot see. From the 37-yard line. Trotter to the air, over the middle, and it's caught close to the first down. Stallworth made the grab, spun down after a gain of eight. We're at 30 seconds and counting. One timeout left for Auburn. Clock will stop on first downs to reset the ball. Second and two. Inside yeah, 25 coverage. seconds left. Man coverage here, Dave. Take that shot. Yep, going to take the shot deep, and it's overthrown. 
There was contact. Darius Robinson defending Quindarius Carr. It's third down. The one way you get contact and you get away with in college football, not so much in the NFL, is you take your outside arm as a defensive back and as you're running, you just start slapping the arm of the wide receiver and try to sl slow him down and get him off his rhythm. That's what Robinson did on that last play. Auburn checking to the sideline. We're back in man-to-man -man here at Clemson. Single high safety, one free safety, man-to-man -man across the board. That free safety, 30 yards downfield, third and two. Trotter drilled as he delivers incomplete. It was intended for Blake. What a pop by Andre Branch on Trotter. It's fourth down. They brought the pressure with three. They wore in man-to-man, -man, but they had underneath help. You see right there, a good inside move. And Branch coming from the opposite side cleans him up. When you get pressure down. with three, you got a good chance. Fourth down and one, 12 seconds left. You got you to punt this ball out of here. Because if you don't get it, you turn it over with seven or eight seconds left. Maybe a play to the sideline and then a field goal if you're Clemson. So you got to kick, right? With a field goal kicker that has the ability to knock it in from 60, at least in practice. Clemson has two field goal kickers. So what do you gain here by going for it if you're Auburn? Because as you said, Chris, you've got Cotton Zaro and then you've got Spencer Benton, who is their deep field goal kicker. They can go from 60. Yeah. Here, here, Coach Holtz used to always talk about this when he was at Notre Dame, that the most important momentum of a game is the last five minutes of the first half and the first five minutes of the second half. Right now, momentum shifted towards Clemson. Get out of this half, punt the ball, go settle down, come back, and come out storming that second half. Don't take a chance here to put your defense in bad field position. The only thing you do is you come out, you try the old trick and play where you can try to get them to jump off sides, and they do, then you take your shot in the end zone, throw the Hail Mary in the end zone. If not, line up and punt it. And if I'm cleansing, if they line up to punt, I'm bringing the house. They are going to punt here. Now, you also, Dave, this is critical. You tell your punter, if they show up, come after you, look. You one step it and get it out of there. So if you're Clemson, do you send everybody and don't even put a guy back to return? They're playing safe defense. They're not even putting their punt return defense out there. Everybody's playing safe and playing man to man. They don't have a guy, they don't have a safety back there to catch it. Auburn will let it roll. See if it just runs the clock out. And it will. Auburn led 14-0, but Clemson has come back to tie the game at 21. Quint Kesnick with Dabo Sweeney. Coach, after struggling early, you got points in your last three drives. What changed? Well, first of all, defensively, we're giving them three big plays where we just don't do our job, and that, that's put us in a hole. But offense, we found some rhythm. We're throwing and catching. I think we got some matchup problems. Or they got some matchup problems. And uh, right now, we're playing with a lot of confidence. So we fall back. Hey, we, they're the national champs. We knew they were going to come out, and they're going to try to defend their streak. But hey, it's a tie ball game. It's anybody's game second half. This game has a really high snap count. It's around 80 plays so far. How do you manage that going forward in the second half? We don't give a crap. It can't, it can't have enough snaps. Line up and play. That's all we're going to do. Thanks, Coach. Dabo fired up, hoping to end the nation's longest win streak at 17 straight games. We do want to note 82 plays officially, 520 yards of offense through one half of play. Now to the studio, the Cooper Tires Halftime Report. Scott Van Pelt, Jesse Palmer. Determined spirit lives at Clemson. Always has. We're passionate. We're tenacious and we're solid orange. But most of all, we're a family. Sometimes loud, always proud, ever loyal. With a determined spirit that says, bring it on. Go Tigers. Welcome back to ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings.
nation's longest win streak on the line. Auburn has won 17 straight and led this game against Clemson midway through the second quarter, 21-7. But as we look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate, Clemson with a comeback. Well, you've seen a quarterback grow up. First year starter, Taj Boyd, is making throw after throw. But the one thing, as Chris Spielman said in the first half, guys are making plays around him. Allen, the big tight end NFL prospect, comes down with another great catch. Guys are making plays around. This quarterback has grown up in the first half against Auburn. Four catches for Allen in the first half. One adjustment Auburn will make. See if they'll change up their coverages. Clemson will start the second half on offense and from the 20 yard line as that kick sails through the end zone. Our Pacific Life game summary, both teams on pace for 500 yards of total offense and the stat that sticks out the most, how about 82 combined plays? Both teams, 40 or more plays in offense. I, and I asked Chris, yes, and Chris said maybe Northwestern against, uh, I forget who he said, a couple Auburn, of, I, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen that. I've never seen two teams have over 80 yards of, or 80 plays in the first half. Now the adjustments. This is where coaches earn their money at halftime in the locker room. True freshman Mike Bellamy will start the game of the second half rather at running back as Boyd will throw and here's Watkins who was very involved in the offense in the first half and he picks up a first down here. Let's check in with Quinn. Spoke to Auburn coach Gene Chizik at halftime. His biggest concern, pass defense. He said in man coverage, really had, had a problem with the way his guys were reacting to the ball when it was in the air. He also added that he expect to see more zone coverage in the second half. I spoke with Michael Dyer running back. He nodded. He says, yes, I am fine. I will play. Didn't play a lot there at the end of the half as Boyd takes off and gets hammered at the 35-yard line, gain of about four. Let me tell you why they got to go a little bit of zone. Urban Meyer was a professional baseball player. Is it easy to hit a fastball if you know the fastball's coming? You can drive it out of the park. And so Chad Moore, it's easy for him to call plays because he knows the fastball's coming by man-to-man -man defensive Auburn. Now it's up to Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, to mix it up as you see a huddle here. This is called their firehouse package. Yeah, both Ellington and Bellamy in the game. And now both tight ends shift to the far side of the formation. Here's Bellamy, who's very fast, but cannot get away from the defender. Good play by Tasharvin Bell, and that's a loss of about a yard. Here's a problem with the fast, true freshman. He's too fast. He gets the jet sweep, and he's not patient enough to let his blockers get out in front of him to set the blocks. Every time he's touched the ball today, he's run up the backs of the blocks. As you move forward here, again, you see what coverage it is. If it's man, they're comfortable. Now it's up to Taj Boyd to recognize his zone, and every zone defense has a weakness in it. It's his job to find the weakness and throw it open. Third down and six. Boyd with time, and Watkins again, first down and more! A foot race, there goes Watkins! He'll take it all the way! Clemson lead, touchdown! Five-yard catch and run for a touchdown by true freshman Sammy Watkins. And Clemson leads for the first time. Extra point makes it 28-21. Well, we used to run this same play. It's a spot corner. Sammy Watkins is going to run a spot route, settle in the zone. There's a corner route over the top of him, and you'll see him come back and get a block. It's a great zone beater and a man beater. Earlier in the game, they ran it against man. And same results here in zone coverage. Sammy Watkins slides away from the backer. Taj Boy sits on his backhand, delivers a pass. That's high execution right there. Well, and again, it's zone coverage, but on third and six, it has to turn into a man coverage. In zone, the one mistake a lot of guys make or a lot of defenses make is that they're out there covering dirt. When 
there's a guy in your zone, especially in third and short situations, you jump him. You play the man-man underneath. You don't sit there and just cover dirt because that guy's too dangerous when he gets the ball in his hands. If at least he makes the catch, you got a rat -a tat tat him. That means eight, nine, ten helmets coming to rack him. Auburn's secondary and defense overall really struggled here through the first two and a half games of the season. And now three touchdown passes today for Boyd. How about touchdowns on the last four possessions with Clem for Clemson? What's been the difference here, Guy? I think the growth of the quarterback, and then Chris made the comment earlier, it's not only the growth of the quarterback, which I think is involved with the growth, the guys around him are excited to play for him. He's putting the ball in catchable places, and the guys are making plays. That's a lot of young talent out there right now. And we got to admit that the offensive line for Clemson is doing an excellent job of protecting when they looked very vulnerable when we broke them down on film. Mason and Bray are deep for Auburn, which trails for the first time. And that one will go out of bounds, so Auburn's going to have great field position to start this drive. Coming up tonight, road test weekend culminates with a top five matchup. Number one, Oklahoma. Number five, Florida State. Southwest Airlines bringing you coverage of that game tonight on ABC. Who do you guys like in Tallahassee? I like Florida State at home. Uh, Landry Jones is a great player. Royals, great receiver. And I'm not using the term great just to use the term great. Both of them are great. The one thing about FSU, their defense, they've had a chance all summer. You know what they've been working on is that tempo of Oklahoma. And I know how they recruited in Tallahassee. There's some not good players. They're great players on defense right now. Yeah, they got torched last year by Oklahoma. And speaking of tempo, Gus Malzahn, he's going to up the heat right now. They're going to go at a faster pace. And if I'm Gus, what I do is I start establishing number five on the ground. Establish number five on the ground. Then when you get them in man, you take their shots because they've had open receivers down the field. Well, he's not in the game right now. Yeah. In fact, they go empty here. Four receivers to the bottom of your screen on first down at big, the Auburn 40. Big bubble screen play. And there it is, and it's dropped by Mason. Incomplete pass. It's second and ten. Okay, remember I told you Lou Holtz used to always say this. Is the momentum most important momentum of the game is the last five minutes of the half and the first five minutes of the second half. Right now, Clemson owns momentum in his home stadium. Right there, you had Mason out there to run the bubble screen. I like Dyer and McCaleb to run the bubble screen. McCaleb's in the backfield. They fake it to him, and now Trotter's pass caught by Stallworth, loose in the secondary, and gets upended at the 45-yard line, but a 15-yard gain and a first down. What's that set up by? The first play they ran, the bubble screen. Now what do they do? They fake the bubble screen, and they run a delayed slant, and they're going to hurry up and snap the ball because of a first down made and get the ball moving in play. Again, no Michael Dyer. Little option. You knew that was being pitched, right? McCaleb going to lose yardage. Not really going to full Clemson with that, are you? Loss of two or three on the play. He, he did a good job. You don't have to be an option quarterback to run down the line of scrimmage and pitch off the defensive end. Where they messed up was the outside. You got to block the edge. That was all on the receivers. Quarterback, ex quarterback executed that fine. 21 nothing Clemson since the five minute mark of the second quarter. And again, Dyer on the Auburn sideline. Told Quint Kesnick he's okay. Trotter in trouble. Has to throw off his back foot. And it should have been picked. And it might have been returned for a touchdown. But Cody sends a ball. Blow it. Corners are the best athletes on the team. But the reason why they play corner and not wide receiver, first of all, it's pressure applied. Forcing Trotter to throw off his back foot. And he tried to body catch it as opposed to catch the ball with his hands. Good pressure from Jonathan Meeks, the safety. Michael Dyer back in the game. Third down and 12. Man coverage. Play fake. And rolling right is Trotter. Going to try to outrun a defensive lineman and cannot. Minimal gain, if any. Jonathan Willard, a linebacker actually, out there making the play. It'll be fourth down. Now there's a difference. Jonathan Willard's not running down Cam Newton. But that's okay. He just got to make a little bit, in my opinion, or even a quicker decision of tuck and run. Well, let's talk about it. Here's Trotter. Last year, you saw relatively zero man coverage because of Cam Newton was a quarterback. Cam Newton right there has a first down because everybody had their backs to the quarterback runner. Instead, fourth and 12. DeAndre Hopkins back to receive. And a 
takes a Clemson hop out across the 10 to about the 12 yard line. Road test weekend, good test for the number 21 team in the country, Auburn, winners of 17 straight games. We mentioned tonight the nightcap on ABC, Oklahoma at Florida State, LSU winning on the road Thursday night, Boise State winning on the road. Stanford has the second longest win streak in the nation at 10 straight, playing at Arizona on ESPN tonight. Notre Dame trying to avoid its third 0-3 start in the last 10 years. They've never had one prior to 2001. And Ohio State of Miami, ESPN tonight. First down of the Clemson 12-yard line. Run play, Ellington. Wrapped up and brought down by Jake Holland. Gain of about two, second and eight. You know, in this game, doesn't it feel like, guys, it's, it's like a, if you break somebody in service in tennis, if you get a stop, it's like a, a service break. Advantage you all of a sudden. And, and for an urban talk about it, starting the first half and starting the second half, couldn't start better if you're Clemson, three and out and they score. Auburn better break serve soon. Yes. Might be in trouble. Here's Boyd on the option and out in space. Ellington across the 20, near the first down at the 22. Looks like he's got it. Bell tripped him up, but moved the chains for Clemson. Chad Morris told us that if his wide receivers don't block, they don't play. Urban's been talking about Sammy Watkins, number two, all day. Watch Sammy Watkins. What's he doing? He's staying with his block, not giving up and trying to get to. That allowed Ellington to get those extra yards. If you're a Clemson wide receiver, you don't block, you don't play. Ellington looked a little shaken up as he went to the sideline. And here's the back of Bellamy shaking one tackle. And Bellamy, oh, great balance. Put his hand on the ground, kept his feet, and got 12 yards to the 35. Here's a jet sweep again there, trying to get Bellamy in the, in the open field. Tremendous athlete. They were concerned early in his career or early in the season about his ball security. He's got to stay tight with that ball. Got a little loose with it again. That's one of the fastest guys. Probably the fastest guy on the field right now. More patient on that run. Here's Boyd. And he and Bellamy sharing the football for a couple seconds. Eventually, the quarterback took it. No gain. And Ikwe blew that play up for Auburn. Who's the, the zone reader, Auburn? Who made a mistake there? The quarterback's got to release that. Yeah, tailback, that tailback's go. taught to go through the mesh. Once he makes that, once he rides it too long, you have to let the tailback hit the ball. You have to pull it right away. Second and nine. Almost all zone coverage by Auburn. Boyd to throw, pop pass, Allen caught it and has the first down to the 46. That's the fifth catch for Dwayne Allen. He had three in the first two games combined. So here, number five, Jake Holland right in the middle. He's getting sucked up and overruns the number three wide receiver. In zone coverage, the middle linebacker, number five, is responsible for the number three wide receiver right there. It's too easy. you got to recognize pass because the high hats of the offensive line. Boyd looking deep and airing it out and incomplete intended for Watkins. A safety was coming over there. He had Bates deep and did a second and ten. See, I think he's making up his mind sometimes where he's going with the ball. If he would have stayed a little bit patient, he had DeAndre Hopkins shooting right across the middle. If I'm Chad Morris, I'm coming back to that play because the middle of the field, folks, are wide open. Boyd on a quarterback draw across midfield, dinged at the 48. He got seven yards. Demetrius McNeil, the first to greet him. So third down at about three. Everybody has to remember your objective on second down and long is get it into a manageable situation. Right now, you're third and three, third to four. It's about a 40% hit right now as opposed to a 20%. So you're in great shape. You're third down three, third down to four. You've got athletes all over the field. That's a great job by Todd Boyd. Six straight successful conversions. And here's Boyd. And the pass is pulled in. And then at the end it comes out. Now it's ruled a catch. 
by Hopkins, tackled by Davis. We'll see if they look at this one a little bit further. You got to complete the catch to the ground. Yeah, this one was uh, actually thrown poorly. What I mean, he threw it to the inside where he needs to throw it to the back shoulder. Great job of Hopkins adjusting. Dabo Sweeney, what do he say? We love our matchups. Anytime they get one on one, they feel they're going to win those battles. And Taj Boyd has the confidence of throwing the coverage, knowing his guys will come down with the ball. First down on the 37 yard line. Here's Watkins again. Cannot get to the outside. Chris Davis pushed him out. Sammy Watkins averaged eight touches per game. The first two, he's been very involved in the pass game as well as the run game again today. In comes the other true freshman, Mike Bellamy, the other speedster. Watch for him on an either jet sweep or find a way to get him the ball. He's not coming in for pass protection, I can promise you that. Ten touches, by the way, for Watkins. Seven catches, 121 yards, and a touchdown in three run plays. Second and four. Boyd to Bellamy out of the backfield. Right at the marker. Pushed it forward to get the first down. Tackled by Bell. See, Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator, and Davos Sweeney have Auburn's defense reeling because Taj Boyd is reading zone. We talked about this. There's always a weakness in the zone. Second and four, flip it out to him, and the defenders are back. He's too quick. He's going to at least get a first down because the space between the ball carrier and the receiver and the defensive backs converging. No surprise at Boyd's resilience. Here's a guy that played with a torn ACL in high school and had a great season. He's under Here's Bellamy again. On the jet sweep. Bellamy inside the 25. Fumble the ball. It's loose. And Auburn recovers. Auburn football at the 18-yard line as it was coughed up by Bellamy. Urban talked about it. Ball security from the true freshman. There's going to be air created between the elbow and the body. Nico Thorpe with the fumble recovery. Watch, watch the elbow come away from the football. As you're a true freshman, you will learn. It'll be taught. Ball security, number one rule. Auburn on the road, trailing by seven, but a takeaway. The first turnover of the game, Mike Bellamy, true freshman, in there, fumbled the ball. Auburn from the 18-yard line, and here's Dyer, and Dyer gets away from the defender, shooing him with the left hand, stays in bounds before he's finally pushed out inside the 40 at the 37-yard line. This is the stretch play that Urban Meyer talked about. They scored a touchdown on it earlier. You see the two poolers, the seal, the kick out on the corner by big number 71. And again, it's the same play they scored on the touchdown in the first half. That kid should touch the ball 23 times a game. 45-yard run, 131 yards for Dyer on 11 carries. Here's Michaela trying to find a hole, grabbed at the ankles at the 35. A gain of two, tackle made by Rennie Moore. He's got a handful of stops. And I get, you know, and I get that you want two backs, but I've always believed if you got a hot horse, ride that hot horse, feed him. Second and eight on the 35-yard line. On the end around, it's Mason, and he got nowhere to go. Willard is there for Auburn. That's a loss of four on the play. It's third down and long. That's a defensive adjustment that they made. Auburn was killing them on the edge with the jet sweep, stretch, whatever you want to call it. They're killing them. That time it was a very nice job. A big number 97 for Auburn. Goodman getting upfield, forcing the ball to bounce. Four down territory yet for Auburn in this situation here? Absolutely. It depends on this play. You get that fourth and two, fourth and three, you should go for it. Gus Malzahn changed the play from the sidelines. Trotter with time, and it is caught in the middle of the field right at the first down marker by Stallworth. And let's see where they spot it. Looks like it's going to be a first down. Trotter took a shot, guys, but I, I love the kid's toughness and his patience, knowing he's going to get hit, keeping his eyes on the spot throw. Now, as a coordinator right here and head coach, you hope you're short. You want to take a shot. I hope you're short. And fourth and one? Absolutely. 
Oh, that was third one. I'm sorry. I thought it was third one. Third one. I was going to say third and one. You're in two down territory. That's the time we take a shot in the end zone, yeah. come back and get on fourth down. It's either first or fourth down, and we'll get the first down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I know that you, know, you like offense, and I, and I know you like points and yards, but. So it is a first down. First down and 10 at the 26 yard line of Clemson. Well, I've been impressed with Trotter, uh, Urban. Having you as a quarter, I mean, he just, he's not Cam Newton, obviously. Everybody knows that, but he's good enough to win with. The way you evaluate is drop back quarterback, will he stand in the pocket and take a shot? He's done that all day. He gets rid of it here as pressure was coming. Out in the flat to Quandarius Carr. And he is inside the 25, but only a gain of two. Cody Sensiball, who dropped what probably would have been an INT for a touchdown, made the play. Hey, Chris, let's give a lot of credit to Kevin Steele. Auburn came out in this game, and they are going through that like a knife through butter. Yeah. Now they're playing very good on defense against a very good offense. Here's Dyer. And he cuts it back to the 20-yard line. He got four. Brandon Thompson. Outstanding defensive tackle for Clemson got off a block. It's third down and about five or six. Third and four actually on the 21. All right, so you got you're, you got to play man coverage right here. You get up and you challenge him and you bring pressure. Emery Blake has been quiet all day. Trotter pulling it back. Has time. Pass end zone or close to it anyway broken up. It'll be fourth and four. Blake was the intended receiver. Yeah. Brewer on the deflection. Do you go for three here if you're Auburn, or do you go for it? You just got the feeling that Emory Blake has not been in the ball game, a big time player. A good job by Brewer turning it on the hip, avoiding the interference, avoiding the right hand hook, and playing the long left arm around and playing the football. They are going to try a field goal. 38 yard attempt. Cody Parkey replacing Wes Byron with a game-winning field goal against Clemson in overtime a year ago. Parkey just two of two on the season. And he hooks that one in there. And Auburn within four. 28-24. Clemson on top. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought you by proud partner of the Heisman Trophy and the U.S. Postal Service. Clemson on top of Auburn, five-minute mark, third quarter, 28-24. You got to go back to 1951, the last time they knocked off Auburn, 14 straight losses, including last year in overtime. Clemson twice at home has defeated the national champ from the previous year. Georgia in 1981, Georgia Tech in 1991, trying to get Auburn here in 2011. Watkins and Peak are deep out of the end zone again, so it will come out to the 20. Well, if you're Auburn, how do you stop Clemson's offense, which looks entirely different the last quarter and a half than it did in the first? Well, like they said, they came out, like Chris mentioned in the first half, it was a man-to-man -man fest back and forth. They came out, tried to play a little zone. If you're going to play zone, you better match up in that zone, especially on third down or get back in man because you're just given a first down. If you play easy. soft zone coverage in third down, you're giving up a first down. That's the whole key. I mean, they're trying to find their identity. When you take man and you play it, you eliminate thought amongst your defenders. Now, when you add zone you got guys looking around but the important thing if they play zone on the underneath routes jump them and turn the zone into man coverage then you'll have a chance to stop them Andre Ellington back in the game after getting dinged a little bit earlier he's running the Wildcat here faked it to Watkins had an offensive lineman he had to get around Brandon Thomas and Darren Bates made the play let's check in with Quinn Kessnick Ellington missed the end of that last series stretching his left hamstring and having it massaged by trainer Danny Poole actually took a football pants off put a wrap and support on that left hamstring did some sprints and he's back in the ball game and got only one yard there Quinn so second and nine Boyd back in a quarterback Boyd and it's caught for a first down and more Sharon Peak, another true freshman 
Gets about 23 yards and a first down. All right, that's a big time throw. While you're throwing from one hash across the field and you're throwing an out cut. And the fact, again, I go back to the point where the receivers can catch in stride, that they can make the transition from the catch to the run, and you have speed on the edges. That's tough duty for a defensive back. Three touchdown passes for Boyd, closing in on 300 yards through the air. He'll hand it off here to D.J. Howard, his sixth career carry. He's another freshman from Alabama, by the way, playing against Auburn today. Gets three yards at second and seven. How about their recruiting class last year for Clemson? On the other time, they're saying he's making a play. It's a freshman. Watkins, Peak. We've seen Martavis Bryant earlier this year. Yeah, Bellamy, although he did have the fumble. Second and seven at the Clemson 48. Boyd in trouble gets away from a man and takes off and dives to the 47 yard line. Gain of about five, third and short. Coming up, call this play for me. Third down to two. Third down to two. Knowing these style of offenses, this might be a time to take that shot. Everybody's expecting a run. Give a hard run action fake. Take a shot and come back on fourth down and try to get the first down. You bring Bellamy into the ball game. So he's either going to be a receiver as he's lined up right now. And you run the jet sweep with him. Here he comes and he gets it and breaks a tackle in the backfield and picks up the first down. Back to back plays where Auburn misses tackles in the backfield and move the sticks for Clemson. Anytime he's in motion, Urban Man, he's not coming in to block. He's not coming in to run, uh, be a wide receiver. He's in there, so they can get him the ball. You run a jet sweep, your whole defense should be running to the jet sweep. I mean, you got to recognize that stuff. How about eight straight third down conversions by Clemson? Hey, Dave, right here, you, I mean, it's going to be, they're going to take a shot. You feeling it? They cross the 50 yard line. There it the is. Pump and Boyd. He was trying deep, but a man covered, so he dumps it off to his check down Watkins. Another broken tackle, this one by Bell, and a gain of about six to the 39. There's a variety of ways to evaluate the maturity of a quarterback. One is how does he take a hit as he's delivering a pass. Number two, you call a trick play, call a shot down the field. It's not, it's not there. It's covered. Check it down. Stay on course. That's second down and four. That's this this quarterback compared to what I've seen on film. He's grown up in this in this, in this game. He's grown. He's a mature player right now. Ellington straight ahead stood up after a gain of one, and it's Gabe Wright, true freshman for Auburn, making the play. So another third down and short. One of the reasons why they've had eight straight third down conversions because they're third and two, third and three. Well, here's what they haven't stopped. We talked about that little bunch route. Three receivers on one side, and you three lamb. One one route short. One route intermediate, one route deep. Sammy Watkins, they'll try to get him out into the pattern. Somebody was wronged up incorrectly, so a timeout called by Clemson. Again, no play clock in the stadium. The officials down on the field are keeping the play clock. Timeout, Clemson. The chase for the Sprint Cup begins with Jimmy Johnson eyeing his sixth straight title, but regular season points leader Kyle Busch and four-time champ Jeff Gordon look to be the top contenders to knock him off. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup begins the Geico 400 at Chicago, 1 Eastern on ESPN tomorrow. It's third and three. Dave Pash, Urban Meyer, Chris Spielman, Quint Kesnick down on the field. Ball at the 38 of Auburn. Big, big target to Sammy Watkins on third downs. He's lined up next to Boyd, and he'll get the handoff. Another broken tackle, and Watkins muscles forward to get the first down. That's three or four missed tackles in the backfield on this drive by Auburn. Now, here's the thing with this offense. They're going to line guys up to get them the football. If they're not in their normal position, he's in this position for a reason, to get him the ball. You see Sammy Watkins, the play's well defended, but fatigue brings missed tackles. And right now you see the tired White Tiger defense, Auburn Tiger defense, compared to an enthusiastic, energized Clemson offense. Left side, hole for D.J. Howard. Bumped out of play by Thorpe. Another 14 yards on the ground. And Brandon Thomas did a heck of a job of springing. Actually... Low cut, the corner out there. 
And Chris Davis, second time he's been down today, got hurt in the first quarter, left for a while, then came back in. Shake it up here again late in the third. But when you have offensive linemen and get, get, get down the field ahead of your back, he's going to spring him. And exactly what he did to Chris Davis right there. What, what's more surprising to you today, the way Boyd has played or the offensive line for Clemson based on what you guys saw in film? I, I think they're both, but I got to go with the quarterback. I, I thought Boyd was okay. I think he's better than okay. He's playing like an all ACC quarterback right now. And I'll tell you what, I'm just so impressed with the weapons around. Taj Boyd, I mean, this is dynamic. The last, the last two quarters have been dynamic Clemson offense. This is a team that almost lost to Wofford last week here at home. They were no, down in the second half. Dave, that's not the same team. I mean, that's, that's Chris and I didn't expect this after watching no. that film last week. No, not off the arm. Uh, and, and you asked the question, Dave, and for me, it's the offensive line. Not only in the run blocking, but more importantly, because they're jacking the ball all over the field, the pass pro has been outstanding. Yeah, Boyd has had a lot of time to throw. And he's got a fresh set of downs here at the Auburn 20. Straight ahead run. And finally a play made. Howard gets maybe a yard as Bates makes the stick. So second down as we're seeing Clemson bring in a lot of new players and running back and a wide receiver. Eight straight third down conversions since the first quarter. Second and nine. And boy to the air. Going end zone. Overthrow. Intended for Hopkins, so it's third down and nine. Go back to that play. That was a hitch and go. The quarterback, once again, show maturity, threw it out of bounds. Don't force it. But he, he had him open because there's a hitch and go and a comeback. Now because him. Hopkins read the corner deep. He stopped his route. Boyd wasn't on the same page. Watch him stop his route right there. And just a little bit high. If he were thrown that low to the outside, that'll get there. That's a designed read by the wide receiver playing off the DB's depth. Man coverage. Boyd on third and nine. Gets rid of it. Wide open. Watkins to the five. Touchdown, Clemson. yard touchdown pass to Sammy Watkins two possession game Clemson trailed by 14 late in the second quarter they now lead by 11 after that extra point for all the guys to leave open number two is not your guy at least cover him he's on cover take a look the one thing about man coverage when a quarterback IDs man you see the center the free safety going to center field he knows it's man coverage now it's about matchups. Here's Sammy Watkins. It was actually a blown coverage. The guy didn't run with him. But I'll tell you what, in man coverage, I know where he's going. He's going to go find number two. Well, here's the blitz. First of all, good blitz pickup by Taj Board in the offensive line. Sammy Watkins, by his split alignment, was going across the field. You were asking the safety or the corner on the other side, on the same side of the field, to cover him from 10 yards off. Well, that's easy pitch and catch. Because the man that's covering Sammy Watkins is going to get picked by the other crossing routes. It's too easy. you got to get up and press. If you're going to play man, press. And how about Taj Boyd? Four touchdown passes in this game. He had six the first two games combined. Last year, he played in seven games. The most he threw four in a game last year was 112 yards. He has 321 today. Remember, he had Kyle Parker last year in a drop back system. Different offense, different results for Clemson today. I'll tell you, this, this stadium is made for this kind of offense. Good job. Mason and Bray are deep. Here's Mason. Hurdles, a teammate, and he gets clobbered at the 28 yard line. 
All right, so how do you respond here if you are Auburn? You had a good drive last time, and you got points, but just three. You just have to go do what you do. I mean, you cannot worry about the other side of the ball. Right now, you've been you've been kind of stopped. You have to give credit to the Clemson defense, but you have to go back and just do what you did early in the game. Quick passes, let Charter get comfortable, get the ball out. Well, they're comfortable from coming from behind. They've made a living since 2009 right. of coming from behind. How about and four so, times last year doing it? Yeah, and, and that's my point. So there's no panic. They have a plan for this. They've been in it. Now, the thing that you have to do is stay patient, run the football, but you got to start not taking all the shots down the field they have underneath routes open start hitting underneath underneath get them a little bit nosy then you take your shots how about chris saying you're comfortable being behind well they are look at that you're, six right, you're right the stats are unbelievable and four and oh last year they were down by 10 or more on their 14 and no season four times including against clemson down 17 three at halftime uh, and came back to win that there's game. no i mean there's no panic right i mean this is what they're used to utah state they were used to it mississippi state they're used to it well, without cam newton now the new quarterback they didn't have cam newton the first two games either chris, chris is on it <laughs> and mississippi state although two losses on the year sec team decent sec team clemson struggled the first two games against troy and wofford Final moments of the third quarter from the Auburn 27. Here's Dyer. And he gets pounded to the dirt by Brandon Thompson, a gain of three. You know, the, the adjustments we were talking about, Kevin Steele and his defensive staff, he's not allowing the ball outside. He's containing the runner. He's forcing it back to contain. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Clemson. Beautiful Saturday in mid-September where the nation's longest current win streak is at stake. Auburn, BCS champs a year ago, 17-game win streak. On the road, losing 35-24 after leading by two touchdowns in the first half. Here's Trotter on second and long. Everybody covered, so he throws it away. It's third and eight at the Auburn 30, and Trotter took a shot that time after he released the pass. Yeah, for Brandon Thompson. Remember what we talked about as a defensive lineman, especially an interior defensive lineman. You don't have to make a thousand tackles. What you have to do is create pressure, eat up space, and make piles. Brandon Thompson's had an outstanding game today, playing with great effort for a big fella at 315. Third down, Trotter over the middle through the hands of Blake. Pass was a little hot. Fourth down. Drift. by Sensible. Urban, he drifted a little bit. His feet weren't set. First of all, he's open on Blake. Yeah, it's man-to-man -man coverage. Blake's been quiet. They caught him in man. You had the perfect play, a slant versus outside leverage on the corner. You know, you wonder if Brandon Thompson hit them play before, rattled him a little bit. Yeah, he usually makes that throw. Well, his fit, footwork was bad. His footwork wasn't set. He didn't step into his throw. He stepped to the side to try to make the throw, not following the target. Only one catch for Blake today. It was a touchdown, 36 yards, but that's it. So Auburn down 11, has to punt. Clark booting it deep. Hopkins. And fair caught at the 18-yard line. Well, this September, thing's going to heat up in the city of Miami. Charlie's got three new angels, and they're taking down the criminals who are above the law. From executive producer Drew Barrymore, ABC's Charlie's Angels, all new Thursdays this fall on ABC. And thanks to the Auburn Marching Band for providing the Charlie's Angels theme music during today's game. 52-yard punt, no return. It's crunch time right now for Auburn's defense. They've got to find an answer and dig deep. Do your job. Blitz. And they run away from it and crossing the 20 is Bellamy to the 23. So we got about five there. What did Dabo Sweeney say when we asked him about, do you have something for Ellington? He said, no, but we're hoping Bellamy becomes that guy. He's getting a shot today, and besides the fumble, he's kind of settled in and played well. 
Seven carries, 25 yards for Bellamy. Boyd to throw, short pass. Watkins makes a move. And it's a first down. Hopkins actually with the first down catch. Go to the studio. Here's Robert Flores. All right, Dave. Studio update. Maryland rocking all black uniforms this week, taking on West Virginia. They're behind big, but DJ Adams, yeah, man. He gets into the end zone. And Maryland cuts the lead to 34-23. Penn State hasn't beaten, lost to Temple rather since 1941, but they're trailing by three in the fourth quarter. Dave. And meanwhile, we have a penalty flag here and a timeout called by Auburn. We'll tell you what the flag is when we come back. Can Auburn stop Clemson and get the football back? Early fourth quarter, plenty of time, but Clemson's offense been outstanding the last two and a half quarters. On first and ten, they run the ball, and a hole across the 35 for Ellington, or make that Howard, and he's near the 40-yard line, close to the first down. Remember Chad Deal, number 30s in the game? That's the indicator, an indicator of what? A vindicator where the ball will be. And that's just part of their offense. They try to get a lot of different formations, but they run the same plays. They got a play action set up off of this if they want it. Howard in the game again, running back. He'll get on second and short. Breaks free. Finally run out of bounds inside the 20 by McNeil. Chad Deal knew his man off the line of scrimmage and created the play. Watch number 30 right there. Chad Deal, take a look at him, staying on his buck, driving him down the field, making a short corner, fresh legs down the sidelines by D.J. Howard. Look for offense coordinator right here. All the momentum. Take a shot down the field. He's got single coverage here at number six. After a 37-yard run, they keep it on the ground. And to the 20 yard line for three yards is Howard. Thorpe made the tackle, so second and seven coming up. Now, here's, here's I think, which goes against the philosophy of Chad Morris and Gus Malzahn. I'm not snapping the ball at 25 seconds, I'm snapping the ball at five seconds. One, to give your defensive rest so they come rush the passer, and two, to take the clock down, the obvious reasons. Clemson with 527 yards of total offense looking for more here on a reverse Watkins and he's cut down at the 20 yard line by Bell. It's a good play there. Might have even lost a yard based on the spot. All right guys third down and about eight. I just disagree with that second down call. That was a great job on first down to take a shot and get back in range on second down. You had second down and manageable. Now you pulled yourself out as third and eight third and nine. Depends what he wants. You got a corner down here, one on one with Howard. Oh, you got to throw away from trips right here. Or you got Matthews coming in motion. They got to get to the 13. Boyd over the middle, and it hit the back of Bell, who is defending the wide receiver, Hopkins, and it's fourth down. Well, this is the man to man coverage we talked about. Good job of undercutting the route. Staying with him. And that ends Bell. 10 straight third down conversions for Clemson, which will try a field goal here on fourth down and seven. Be about a 38 yard try. And Chandler Catanzaro, it's already missed once and missed eight times a year ago, but he puts this one through. And it's 38 24, a two touchdown lead for the home team. Football on ABC brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, Sports, and Ford Drive One. Back at Clemson, where Auburn finally comes up with a stop, holds Clemson to three, and it's a 14 point lead for the home team early in the fourth. Center deep. 
And Mason will take a knee. It will come out to the 20 for Auburn. Time now for our Pacific Life game summary. Auburn led 14-0, but only 10 points since the first quarter. They also led 21-7, but then Boyd got going. Over 300 yards passing, four touchdowns, a lot of third down conversions, and Clemson with TD drives five of the last seven times with possession. Just to go in those numbers, David, 25 for 36. That ball's being spread around to a number of different wide receivers which makes them even more difficult to defend. But Auburn has been here before. Gene Chiswick's team last year down 10 or more four times, came back obviously to win all four as the BCS champs. And 11.48 is plenty of time for this offense. Play fake for Trotter. Trotter going to air it out. And the pass is underthrown, but it's caught at the 38-yard line by D'Angelo Benton, his first catch of the season. That's just a guy making a play. They ran a little reverse, fake reverse pass. Trotter scrambled around, delivered a catchable ball. That was well defended by Clemson. He's going to make a play. 41 yards through the air. Now here's Dyer as a whole. Trying to bust it to the outside, and a good tackle by Willard. Still about eight on the ground, with Lutzenkirken out there blocking for Dyer. It's Dyer again, first down to the 26-yard line. Willard tripped him up. Move the chains, though, for Auburn. And there's an injured Lutzen Auburn Kirken. Tiger. Yep, Lutzen Kirken, our fullback, who's also a good pass catcher down in the red zone. And that's a guy that can't afford to lose. The best lead blocker, and he's a big reason why Dyer is having the yards that he's having at 151 on 15 carries. Lutzen Kirken, a junior from Marietta, Georgia. He had the go-ahead touchdown in the win over Alabama last year. He's made some big plays for Auburn. We'll see if that impacts their play calling and what they want to do here inside the 30. Impact their running game. Remember, their whole power game, that's when backside coolers, he's either the lead guy or the pool guy. That's who they run to every single time they run the football besides the jet sweep. First down at the Clemson 26. Each team with a pair of timeouts inside 11 to play in the fourth. The pitch to McCaleb inside the 15-yard line and finally tripped up at the 8, about 18 yards before Meeks saves six points. This is why Auburn never panics. This is where they used to be, especially this year. They understand, and this is their first test on the road. So far, they're answering the test. They were down two, with two minutes to go by 10 points against Utah State in one. Here's Dyer, and he goes down after a minimal game. Willard making the play again, second and goal. A nice job of branch number 40, the defensive end. We talked about how they defend the stretch play. Their ends are getting upfield, forcing them not to get to the corner, turn it up inside where all your orange helmets from pursuit are coming. And movement on the right side of the line. Brandon Mosley came up out of his stance. It'll be second and goal from the 13. That's a big penalty. That's a, that takes him right off the schedule. Second down and eight is much more manageable than second down and 13. Give him an assist to the Clemson fans. Loud and proud. All day. So Lutzen Kirkins back on the field, by the way, which is good news for Auburn. He's limping, though. He's limping. Down there jumping around. See if he has strength. Look for Emory Blake, number 80. Inside receiver to the field. Looks like they caught him in man coverage. There's no safety deep back here. Nothing deep. Now they're dropping out. Here comes your safety. Trotter pumps. 
Fires, picked off at the five-yard line. A diving interception by Sensible, making up for the one that he dropped earlier. The first one he dropped was too easy, Dave. Urban showed you no safety deep, has the cadence was going. Look, now we have safeties in the pitcher. Sensen ball is going to come off of his coverage right there. Watch him come off, play zone, read the quarterback size, and make a diving play. That's a good job of deception by the defense of showing no safeties. During the cadence, you go back to two deep, you play zone. Nice job, Sensen ball. I'll tell you, take in this atmosphere, Dave. You tell me why this team should be headed to a nice bowl game now. This is good players. The well coach in this environment is tremendous. They host Florida State here next weekend. Big one for the Seminoles on ABC tonight against number one Oklahoma. Off the left side. Great balance. Howard to the 14 yard line. A huge run on first down for the freshman. All right, I want you to watch the ball though. This is a good run, tough run. Watch the ball get loose. Watch this ball pop out of his arm. See that ball? See the air between the ball? If I'm up there, I gotta tell those guys, look at the situation, it's 9-11 to go. This kid's carrying the ball loose, tackle the football. Here's Sammy Watkins in the backfield again, lining up to the left of the quarterback. Jet sweep, there. There it is, Watkins trying to get outside, breaks the tackle, picks up the first down. Here's Robert in the studio. All right, Dave, remember we told you that Penn State hadn't lost to Temple since 1941. That streak remains intact. Michael Zordich goes in from close, and Penn State is able to get the turnover on downs as Temple's ensuing possession goes nowhere. And Penn State is going to win this game 14 to 10. West Virginia, their lead to Maryland has been cut to six. Fourth quarter, 442 left at Maryland. Here it's a 14-point game. Clemson picking off Trotter. And now going to work as the tight end Allen has another catch out near the 25 for about seven yards. That's a good play on first down. Well, it's a good play because of second down and four. That's exactly what offense coordinator is looking for. Second and three, second and four. You're in a run pass mode. The defense has to defend both. So it's, that's, that's exactly what they're looking for. And they got a snap. The the Six to catch for Allen today. But to snap the ball with five seconds to go. Let the play clock run down now. Here's Bellamy behind the blocker. And they're just gashing him right now. There is a penalty flag down. But they're able to run the ball and lean on that Auburn defensive line. If this is a hold, this is an impact penalty. Now you're going to put them back in second down and second down and real long. If not, it's first down. This is one of these penalties during the course of the game could change the game. Well, again, it would be a spot foul. Illegal block going away. Number 30 of the offense. Penalty pass and distance for the goal. Now, that's different. That's different. Holding would have been better. Yeah, that's impact penalty of the game. This Chad Deal has done a good job when he's in the ball game, draw, uh, blocking all day. Right here. See what he does. He's off the ground. Now that's not the the play. It happened before, and usually when they call that play, somebody's engaged high, and Deal must have hit him low. And that's not a spot foul. Again. Half the distance to the goal, but you'd have been better off with a hold. You are back at your 14 now. It's second and 14. The safe throw would you get the draw play in the screen on big second and long plays. And Boyd will throw. And it's caught at the 28 yard line by Hopkins near the first down marker. Lost to shoot also. Now, how do you get that play up on second and 14 as a pass defense? Playing zone, playing soft zone. They can't afford to play soft zone. You got to get up and challenge. They need the ball. It's a first down catch. 80th play of the day for Clemson coming up. And they're slowing it down a little bit right now. They're slowing it down. 
You don't need to run it, run the clock fast. Just slow it down. Take your time. Here's number 30. That's where they'll run the football. Breaking a tackle in the backfield is Howard. A couple of penalty flags down. Now, guys, big picture, whether Auburn comes back to win or not. In recent history, the previous year's BCS champ has been considered a favorite to repeat. Think about Alabama, Florida a couple times. People weren't sure about Auburn losing Cam Newton, losing Nick Fairley. What do you guys think about this team? Big picture in the SEC, struggling on defense three straight weeks, big time. That's why they're, in my eyes, a 500 SEC team because of the struggling defense. Now, if they can get there, I mean, if I'm just talking, I mean, they're in the hundreds. And I know it's early on, but you take a look at Clemson on the ground, has 215 yards on the ground. They're 118th team rushing defense. In the SEC, that's got to change, or you're not going to you're not going to compete against the big boys of the SEC if you can't play defense. Now, coach, you just left there, so maybe am I wrong? Well, last year you had 24 seniors. And don't don't devalue leadership, especially when you're talking about 18 to 22 year olds. Those 20, those 22 or 24 seniors are gone. So I, unless block, unless they start. Correction, illegal block in the back, number 63. That penalty is declined. Illegal formation, five men in the backfield on the offense. That penalty will be accepted. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, I'm gonna state the obvious, like Chris was saying, unless you play better defenses. You might not even be looking at 500 really. in, this, in this conference. You better play. It's all about SEC. Let's, let's, let's be real. It's all about defense. 775 rushing yards in three games. Allowed by Auburn against Utah State. Now Mississippi State and Clemson, two good teams. Utah State obviously played great. Could have won that game week one. You lost a Lombardi winner in Fairley, a Heisman Trophy winner in Cam Newton from a year ago. On the sweep, it's Watkins to the 25. He got two. Well, I just want to tell you why there's concern if you're an Auburn fan is that number right now they're probably at 218 yards now and just watching the film you know Clemson's good but they're not exactly a running power football team and this is without the quarterback in the spread offense being a big run threat on second and long Boyd and Allen goes up to make the grab He'll come up just short of the first down. It'll be third down and about a yard. You're talking about one of the best tight ends in the country that came in the game with three receptions. 6'4", 255-pound guy. And, and anytime Tars Boy sees a matchup that issue, he's been getting in the ball. And Boyd hanging in there, taking the shot from D Ford. If Clemson picks up this first down, is it ball game? They're getting pretty close to say ball game. But you never know with Auburn, so you want to stick around and watch because they can put points up in a hurry. Here's Bellamy. Got the first down. Dragging a defender with him across the 40. The 29th first down today for Clemson's offense. You're going to see him really slow down and play the clock now, like Chris was saying earlier. Here's the other thing now. If you're Auburn's defense, you might see some missed tackles. But you got to get in the huddle, which they don't huddle, but somebody's got to communicate to the defense. Boys, we got to start tackling the football. Don't worry about the form tackle. Go after the ball, or otherwise we have no chance. For keeping Bellamy, the true freshman, in the game. Go get it. Go get the ball. They'll keep it on the ground. Stumbling forward is Bellamy for about four. Let's check in with Robert in the studio. A quarterback to throw for 400 yards in a game. Chuck Long in 1988. James Vandenberg has 399 yards. This touchdown to Cavante Martin Manley has Iowa up four with just one second left. They scored 21 unanswered points to take the lead late. Dave. Wow. Yeah, Pitt had that one in control, but Iowa with the comeback and the Hawkeyes needing a win coming off a loss to Iowa State. Second and seven for Clemson, trying to end Auburn's 17-game win streak. Ball security. I got another freshman in it running back, and I have to call timeout here. Second and seven for Dabo Sweeney, trying to get one of the biggest wins in his young career at Clemson. 
Hey, check out the new show, NFL 32, a highly interactive program driven by social media where you, the fan, help decide the topics of the show with Chris Mortensen, Susie Colburn Company, weeknight 6 Eastern on ESPN2. Dave Pash, Urban Meyer, Chris Spielman, Quinn Kesnick down on the field. Clemson trying for the third time to knock off a defending national champ. Watkins in space just shoves a teammate to create room and he picks up another Clemson first down. A special true freshman. He's a true freshman that's a go to guy. You don't see a lot of that. That's his comfort level. All quarterbacks have a comfort level. Now he does a great job of spreading the ball around but he looks for number two in crunch time. Well, they're still in the spread formations. Anytime there's a spread formation, you see Auburn brought the corner blitz there. Anytime you blitz, you have to throw some type of screen because the guy's going to be unblocked coming off the edge. Great job by Tyus Boyd and obviously excellent effort, Bray. And a breakout game for Boyd. Almost 400 passing yards, four touchdowns. Got a little unbalanced line here. Expect some kind of jet sweep. See the two guys on the line of scrimmage. Sammy Watkins over to the right side. Getting outside is Howard. He did step out. And he'll be short of a first down. Guys, we talked about what Auburn can do in the SEC or what maybe they can't do. What about Clemson in the ACC? How, how good do you think this Clemson team is? I think they're good. If they stay healthy and keep improving, they're going to battle for the championship. Yeah, they're still, you know, a very young team, so they're not deep. They're as good as anybody in the ACC on the front lines. Remember, he has 42 redshirt freshmen and freshmen that are on his roster, 42 out of 85. And here's the, I just want to say one, one more quick point about Auburn. We asked about this. You look at the total yards that they've given up. You're giving up 603 yards. Now, this is an explosive offense, don't get me wrong, but 603 yards. Now, you can't do that and expect to compete in the SEC. Against a Clemson team that was down in the second half to Wofford last week. They're up by two touchdowns late today against Auburn. The defending champions are trailing. Auburn trying to win its 18th straight, but it doesn't look good now. Down two scores, unable to stop Clemson. As the home team continues to take time off the clock, running the football. Take your defense. Run play and bouncing off the tackle is Bellamy. So now it's third down and short. And let's see what Clemson comes up with here. Auburn has one timeout. We'll make that two timeouts for me. You go to the air? No, I go to I go to number two on a jet sweep because they've yet to stop it. Or number five. So that's Watkins or Bellamy. You got two minutes, 40 seconds left in this game. You keep it on the ground. But they're not going to do that. And we have 22, D.J. Howard, who's run hard. He's certainly an option. This is a problem that Auburn's defense is facing because guess what? You haven't stopped the run. You haven't stopped the pass. Yeah, that, that's bad, isn't it? Yes. You want to stop one of them. And delay a game penalty. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. All right, let me rephrase the question. Now that it's third day, not rephrase it, just ask it again. Do you throw the ball? On third down and four, probably not. On third and eight, you get a first down here, it's over. Well, and then, okay, so we're assuming they throw the ball. Where they've had success is when they spread the field and they're not in a bunch formation, they look for Dwayne Allen because they like the matchups and they're with the safeties and the linebackers. If they're in a bunch formation, they run a little bit of that bunch route, that three-layer route, about short, medium, and deep. And they've been looking for Sammy Watkins. Now, if they're in trips, they put um, Hopkins on one side, and they work the back side of trips. Right here is DeAndre Hopkins. He works the back side of trips. And right here is Dwayne Allen, who's been a big factor in the spread formation. Not bunch receivers. And another see. timeout called. Dabo Sweeney screaming at a fellow coach there. Boy, back to back bad instances of time management by Clemson. We mentioned that Clemson next week plays Florida State here. 
And we don't know what Florida State's going to be ranked. If they beat the number one team in the country, Oklahoma, be interesting. That game's tonight on ABC. Then they go to Virginia Tech October 1st. Then the next team that's currently ranked that they would play would be at South Carolina end of November. Let me show you a dangerous team right there, in my opinion, North Carolina. They have a team of athletes. They're a dangerous team in the ACC, and as the season progresses throughout the ACC, keep your eye on the Tar Heels. That's the ACC today. Who knows what the ACC will look like tomorrow That's with right. reports that Syracuse and Pittsburgh have applied for membership to the ACC. There are about six or seven other schools that have been rumored to be going to the ACC. Okay, before the timeout, Dave, they showed zero. Safety's deep. That means it's going to be a six-man pressure. That's exactly what it is. Boyd with pressure gets nailed, and it is juggled and caught by Hopkins. What a play by the quarterback, and then Hopkins able to hang on to the ball. Boyd took a lick. That's why I circled him before the play. Anytime they've been in press coverage, his number one option all day has been DeAndre Hopkins. A good job of staying with it, focus and concentration. Quarterback hung in there, a free, a free rusher. I have, I'll tell you what, I have not been more impressed with the quarterback in a long time to see his growth from game one oh, to it's game unbelievable. three. Unbelievable. Dabo told us the light went on for him in, in the second half of Troy. Well, both lights went on this game. First down and inside, two minutes to go. Boyd will keep. He's got running room. Near another first down at the 20-yard line. Once again, another sign of maturity. That was a broken play. The tailback must have went the wrong way. He just got north-south, kept him on schedule. Take a look now at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Auburn driving, trying to cut the lead from 14 to 7. Actually, this is a, a touchdown here with Clemson down 21-7. Back-to-back scores. That one to Allen. And Clemson right now leading 38-24. He had the pick by Sensabaugh on Auburn's last drive when the Tigers were going in to try to make it a seven-point game. It was a great catch by Sensiball. Got on him for dropping a pick six. Tried to breadbasket it, catch it with his body. Then he made this super catch, laying out, extending, and catching the ball with his hands, saving points for his Tigers. And Boyd's going to throw, and it's incomplete, so the clock will stop. With 1.39 remaining. You, know, a lot, you want to run the ball. Everything says run the ball. I don't mind the call. I really don't mind the call. Well, put, another down, put another touchdown on him. It's third down yeah, and one. Third and one now. You can take another shot, right? If you want to right now, third and one. How about guys total 626 yards for Clemson? Most ever against an SEC team by the Clemson Tigers. You know, I play one every year. They're playing South Carolina every year, and they usually play somebody pretty good non-conference in the SEC. Watch these two guys are going to come right here in the season. DJ Howard will follow him. Howard on third and one, pinballing forward, trying to get the first down. We'll see where they spot it. Igwe, the first man to greet him for Auburn. It's a first down. Clemson going to win it. How about true freshman Sammy Watkins, 17 touches against the defending national champion, true freshman. 199 total yards for Sammy Watkins. 155 through the air, 10 receptions, 7 catches, for 44, or 7 runs for 44 yards. Auburn plays Florida Atlantic next, and then they go at South Carolina, at Arkansas, Florida at home, at LSU, at Georgia, home against Alabama. Didn't mean to stress you out, I remember when I just listed those <laughs> opponents coming up. The record's pretty good against those guys. 
Urban Meyer had a 22 game win streak in Florida. Auburn had a 17 game win streak, the longest in the country until now. The champs about to go down on the road. Fans will rush the field here in Death Valley. The fans will come on the field. Boyd takes a knee. Down go the champs. Auburn's 17-game win streak comes to an end. <laughs> Biggest win in Dabo Sweeney's young career at Clemson as they go to 3-0. Knocking off Auburn 38 24. Florida State up next for Clemson here at home next weekend. Dabo Sweeney is standing by with Quint. Coach, you're down 21 to 7. What changed in this ballgame? That's what I told you before the game. Our team believes. Our team believes. They got heart. We got greatness in us. So I told them, you got greatness in you, but you got to make a decision to be great. They made a decision to be great today. And I couldn't think of a better place to end the street than Death Valley, South Carolina, baby. Coach, how, how do you best describe the play of Taj Boyd, your quarterback? Unbelievable. Cool, cool. I mean, just ice water in his veins. Just couldn't be more proud of him. What a great game for him. We have so many guys step up. DJ Howard, what can you say? Guys going down, guys stepping up. That's what football is all about. You said you hope this will be a springboard. What do you mean by that? Well, we're 3-0. And we got, we're going to enjoy this tonight, but we got conference play next week. Got a great team in Florida State, and I hope they come in here undefeated. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Road test weekend for Auburn. They are roadkill here in Clemson. 38-24, Clemson beats Auburn and ends Auburn's win streak at 17 straight. Stanford plays tonight on ESPN. Stanford now the longest win streak at 10 in a row. For Chris Spielman, Urban Meyer, Quinn Kesnick, our entire outstanding ABC crew. I'm Dave Pash. And don't forget Florida State is on ABC tonight at 8, taking on number one, Oklahoma. So long from Clemson. Clemson beats Auburn 38-24.